Gary Anderson at the 35. To our left. Anderson looks like he's in the next county. And he will bring that kickoff down to our end of the field. Kicking it left to right. With Brown and Springs down deep. All right, here's the signal. And the kickoff. Gary Anderson, nice high end of the ring, kick down to the four-yard line of Brown with the ball over the 10, the 15. He makes a move up over the 20, still fighting his way to the 25, and is brought down at the 25-yard line. Right down at the bottom of the play was David Little for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yes, a good, strong hit by David Little underneath, and a good thing, too, because Preston Bryan was rolling. So, okay, in the Steelers' past three games, all of them losses, the opponent has scored with its first possession. So let's see if the Steelers, for openers, if the Steelers' defense can turn that trend around. J.D. Fogarty's taking a close look at that Jets offensive line, and we haven't got the, uh, the view of them yet coming out of the huddle. We're looking for Joe Fields at center. He's a nine-year veteran from Widener, and he is a, a key to this offense again. He's not there. Bingham is going to play at center, and Pellegrini will be at guard, as I see it right now, on the left side. For some reason, they're delaying their huddle. Now Jack Lambert's looking at the sideline. What appears to be the problem, Iron? I can't spot it. I can't determine when it's holding up the game unless it's uh, there's an official's uh, conference over there along the sideline with the Jets. Now, uh, here they go. They had an official who had to get himself repaired, apparently, at the start of the ballgame. Marvin Powell is out there. Dan Alexander is out there. The offensive line. Chris Ward. So we're going to see Bingham opening this ballgame at center. Bingham goes over the football. Way back to the right side, split in left, and they ran out of the eye formation. They pitched the ball back to Freeman McNeil, running over to the right side, cannot turn the corner, is thrown for a loss. Met by Dwayne Woodruff, aided by Donnie Shell on the play. Now this is a key in the ball game. They've talked about it all week. The Steelers have been giving up the run, and teams have been throwing the run at them, giving them a difficult time with it. And they're in a two-minute drill. They're going without a huddle. Here's the handoff again to Freeman McNeil, and again he's brought down this time at the line of scrimmage. Almost thrown for a loss. Mike Merriweather got the initial hit on him. Well, Jack Lambert got a piece of him in the backfield, just nicked him, and then Mike Merriweather uh, gave him a hit. So, all right, the Steelers with strong run defense for openers. Third you're down not, and ten. You're not going to get to talk much this way. <laughs> they're, not, they're not huddling. Here is Todd with time. Oh, dumps it over the line of scrimmage to the 30. Completes the pass to Marion Barber, and he comes up to the 34-and-a-half-yard line. He is shy of a first down. Donnie Shell made the tackle. All right, so for the first time in four ball games, the Steelers have stopped the opponent on its first drive. The, the, the Jets obviously are not going to score on this possession. Paul Scancy is downfield for the Steelers. Chuck Ramsey, a seven-year veteran from Wake Forest, will be the punter for New York. He is standing at his own 19-yard line. He is in shadow here at Shea Stadium. The sun dropping off to our right. About three-quarters of the field, or at least two-thirds of the field, let's say, in the sunlight right now. Ramsey waiting for the snap. Here it comes. The punt almost blocked. He gets it away. Scancy calls for the fair catch. Takes it at his own 32-33 yard line. And the Steelers will put the ball in play. Not a deep kick. Just 33 yards by my count. But in any event, it's pretty good field position for the Steelers at their own 33. Johnny Rogers in there and almost blocking that punt, putting pressure on Ramsey. Here go the Steelers from their 33. Here goes Terry Bradshaw. Bradshaw, the quarterback, Ilkin, Wolfley, Webster, Boris, and Brown. And that offensive line, Corson not able to go today. Split backs behind Brad. And the handoff. Here it comes. And driving up through the middle and bringing the ball onto the 40-yard line was Frank Pollard. Pollard on the initial carry stopped by Lance Bell, and he picks up a good solid seven yards. And right off the bat, the Steelers take it to the strong left side of the Jets' defensive line. I'm talking about Klecko and Gastineau. They punched a hole over Klecko and got good yardage. 
Jets nail it down on defense. They use the four-man front. Here comes Frankie in motion out to the right. Bradshaw, a little draw action, gives it to Franco, and he's got people all over him. John Woodring got there first. Gastineau was there. Franco was there. They were all over him. This will be marked at the 37-yard line, a loss of about three yards back to the 37. And now it is going to be third down and long yardage, about six. Yeah, you might say that the Jets were blitzing the run. They were loading up against it. So Bradshaw's got a passing down. Jets bring in Johnny Lynn, their nickelback. Take out John Woodring, a linebacker. So they've got four down linemen, two backers, and five defensive backs. Pittsburgh with three wide receivers. Here's Bradshaw from the pocket. Barry is broken up at the 50-yard line. Calvin Sweeney making a move laterally, coming in toward the near side of the field. And Johnny Lynn going in front of him to break up the pass. Johnny, Incomplete. Johnny Lynn almost picking it off. Bradshaw got decent protection on the play, but Johnny Lynn played that, uh, that throw very uh, shrewdly. Line of scrimmage, the Pittsburgh 37. Colt with standing. Kicking into what win there is that has not been significant today. Colquitt standing at his own 24. Kirk Springs downfield for New York. Colquitt takes the snap, a low one. He gets the punt away. It's going to be hard to handle. Low trajectory, bouncing in the 25. The 20 picked up by Springs. He's over the 20, up to the 25. Trap hit and brought down. Looked like it might get by Springs, but he fielded it brilliantly. He did not have much running room as a 44-yard punt is returned only about four yards, and Brian Hinkle made the tackle. Mark the ball inside the New York 25, and with the score nothing nothing, we have a timeout. This for GMAC and Bush Beer. All right, the Jets have the ball at their 25 on their first possession. The Steelers shut down Freeman McNeil, but that's going to be tough to keep doing. Freeman McNeil, of course, missed time this year because of a shoulder separation. It's interesting that the Jets, with him in the lineup, are 5-2. and two. Without him in the lineup, they're 2-5. and five. That tells you something about Freeman McNeil, who is a whale of a halfback. A guy uh, who doesn't even really need a hole. Marvin Powell has talked about that. We'll tell you more about that later, what he had to say. I didn't put it out on the initial drive. Jerome Barkham and Mickey Schuler were both in there. They played two tight ends for that entire series, not a drive, a series. So now Schuler is out and Lamb Jones is in, the four-year veteran from Texas. And that will be a change in the offensive look of the Jets. And the timeout just continues out there. They've had uh, long timeouts today. Yeah, I don't know what the problem is, but uh, I, I was saying before, uh, Marvin Powell, uh, the big offensive tackle, he is unstinting in his praise of Freeman McNeil. He says Freeman doesn't have to see that hole. He can feel it. He doesn't have to have an excellent, excellent block. He can make any block an excellent block. That's what they think of Freeman McNeil. All right, here we go. The Jets on the attack moving right to left, and they do a little switching now. There goes Jones out to the right. They bring one wide out, Walker in tight, giving them again a two tight end look. And the handoff is taken by Freeman McDeal, digging over the right side and advancing the football up to about the 28-yard line. He'll pick up a good, strong three yards. Mike Merriweather makes the stop. The Steelers have John Goodman, Gary Dunn, Tom Beasley in the front three. Merriweather, Lambert, Caves, and Cole are the linebackers. Woodruff and Blunt on the corner. Shell and Woods are deep. Now Schuler is back in as the second tight end. And they bring Wesley Walker as a flanker to the left. Now they split a man and flank him over to the right side. Single setback. Back goes Richard Todd. Todd firing down the middle. And he gets there. Lambert almost knocked it down, but at the 45, Lamb Jones pulled it in. And he goes up near midfield. They say that he touched down at the 46-yard line, and Merriweather got a hand on him. You saw the ball coming right down the middle, and you saw Lambert reach for it, and his fingers barely missed it. An 18-yard pickup, yes, and Rick Woods was playing Lamb Jones and ran right by him, failing to stop him after he caught the ball. But anyhow, Jones was brought down at the 46-yard line. All right, that is the first down for the Jets. Marion Barber sets up as the wing back to the right side. Now he comes in motion out to the left. And they hand it off to Freeman McDeal. Gives a little head fake and then hits into the left side and brings the ball up to around the 48-yard line. Gary Dunn is down at the bottom of the play for the Pittsburgh Steelers along with Donnie Shell. And it's going to be second down. 
and we'll call it uh, eight yards to go, a short eight. And the uh, Jets so far have not been able to move the ball on the ground, but Todd is two for two throwing over the middle and may have something to work on there. Jets are going back to their uh, regular huddle formations now, huddling, not using the two-minute drill. Pitch out to McNeil on the right side, and he breaks it up over the 15. He goes to the Steeler 45 and down the far side of the field to the Steeler 47-yard line. Freeman McNeil. We have a penalty marker down. He was stopped by Rick Woods and Dwayne Woodruff. That football is going to come back, I do believe. Packed house here today at Shea Stadium, 60,000 capacity. Well, a holding call against uh, Tom Coombs. Did he identify as an 88 backup tight end? Is he in there? Well, in any event, a holding call against the Jets makes it second down and 13 for the Jets at their 42-yard line. GMAC and the Mutual Broadcasting System will present the player of the game with a handsome plaque in recognition of his outstanding performance. We'll announce the winner at the end of today's broadcast. Jets are out of the huddle. All right, they got a double wing now, and they bring the right man. That is Freeman McNeil in motion. Here's Todd firing down the middle and almost picked off. He overthrew Wesley Walker and coming across from the far side of the field. Steelers were getting a shot at that football. Well, I tell you, the Steelers also were blitzing Richard Todd, and he threw an ugly pass. That pass was uh, was just a, an old wobbly thing that wasn't going anywhere. Todd is a quarterback who can kill you when he's hot, but he can be as cold as he can be hot. We'll see what kind of a day he has today. It's scoreless in the first period. He's completed 278 out of 462 on the season. And he's had 22 intercepted. Here's Todd dropping back. They come after him. They got him and down he goes. The sack made by Keith Gary coming from the right side and got him at the 32 and a half yard line. The big guy from Oklahoma. And that is a big, big defensive move for the Steelers. Oh, you betcha. And John Goodman had beaten Marvin Powell and was pressuring uh, Richard Todd from the other side. But it was Keith Gary who got to him first, so the Jets have to punt. Chuck Ramsey in punt formation. Standing at about his own 18 yard line. Scancy is deep for the Steelers, and they have two up men. Harvey Clayton playing in one-up position. Here's the snap. And Ramsey booms it. It is high and beautiful. Back Scancy up to his own 16. He's over the 20, looking for running room, and he is dragged down at around the 23-yard line. John Woodring got there first after a 52-yard punt. No score in the ballgame. We have a timeout. This is for Motorcraft and Kodak Disc Camera. A beautiful 52-yard punt by Chuck Ramsey. He has had one of the more difficult problems that punters have to face around the league because Shea Stadium has such a notorious win today. However, it's just a nice breeze here. And here go the Steelers from their 23-yard line. Gary Bradshaw, quarterback in the Pittsburgh Steelers. He sets them. Bradshaw handing it off, and Franco Harris sitting off the left side, dancing the ball to the 25-yard line. Harris on the run. Lance Mel, Marty Lyons down at the bottom of the play for the New York Jets. So he picks up about three yards. It's going to be second down and seven. Gastineau on the left side of that four-man down front. They got a backer pulled up tight. Bradshaw with split backs behind him calling the signals. Steelers set. Here's Bradshaw firing downfield, completing it to Benny Cunningham at the 48-yard line. Knocked down at the 50-yard line. And the tackle made by Ken Troy. Benny Cunningham right down the middle, and Bradshaw has completed a big one. A pickup of 25 yards on the play, and Bradshaw getting excellent protection. I, I think that perhaps the Steelers' offensive line is inspired today to, to just go all out to see that nobody lays a hand on that guy. But, of course, it's early in this scoreless game. Bradshaw lines them up. 
He's got a strong side set. Now he splits them. Frankie Pollard and Franco Harris going to give to Pollard. Pollard has a pulling guard. That's Wolfley. He finds an opening to the 45, the 40, 35, 30. Drags a man with him all the way down to the just 28-yard line. Frankie Pollard is tackled by Ray. That's Daryl Ray, the four-year veteran from Oklahoma. Wolfley, a pulling guard that time, opened up the hole. You can see it develop, and here he came. And you betcha, Frankie Pollard running inside that block, hurdled a Jets tackler, and then Daryl Ray nailed him, but he said nothing doing, Daryl Ray. You're on the wrong guy, and he dragged Daryl Ray a good eight yards, a 22-yard pickup for Frankie Pollard to the 28. Brad Shaw looks over that defense. Four down linemen poised up front. Gastineau fighting to get through Larry Brown. Bradshaw flips it out to Harris at the 30 to the right. Gets around the man to the 25 down to the 19-yard line. Franco Harris danced around Woodring and came down to the 20 where he was knocked down by Ken Schroy. Got him at the 19. About a yard shy of a first down. I'll tell you something. That Steeler offensive line, I hate to keep repeating this, but they, in these opening minutes, in this first quarter of this ball game, are just really playing football in the trenches on those passing downs. They are giving him protection. Second and one. Calvin Sweeney sets up out to the left and Greg Hawthorne to the right in a strong right formation. The Jets bunch their secondary up close. Handoff goes to Harris. And Harris gets right into the middle. He should have the first down. Bob Crable uh, covering the play. That's first down number three. Mark the ball at the 17-yard line in Jets territory. No score in the ball game, and the Steelers with a first and ten. From the 17, Bradshaw calling the signals. Short drop. Let's it go to the far side quickly and almost cut. It was Calvin Swinney covered by Jerry Holmes. Holmes got a hand on the ball and deflected it away. Well, Bradshaw just put it up there and let Calvin try to outfight uh, Holmes for that football. And Calvin almost pulled it off, but he was sort of twisted around on the ball. It was a little bit behind him, and he was having difficulty with that sideline, which, of course, he had on his cranium. So, all right, it's second and ten, and Bradshaw is 2-4-3. Swinney goes left. He's the wide out. Slot man over there is Hawthorne. They set Pollard up as the flanker right. Franco, the lone setback. Bradshaw's back. Here comes the rush. He's protected. He fires for the end zone. And it is wide of both targets. Over the head of Benny Cunningham. And Frank Pollard deeper could not get to the ball. And Ken Schroy down there on the coverage. And the pass is incomplete. Brad is two for five on the afternoon. No score in the ball game. Well, Mark Gastineau rushing by Larry Bryan to get to Bradshaw that time, but the old man Bryan, he recovered. He says, whoops, I lost that man. I got to go find him. And he got back there in time to run Gastineau past Bradshaw. But all right, it's third down and 10 from the 17. Gastineau, Klecko, Lions, and Neal up front. Steelers with two to the left and one to the right. Little angle drive by the defensive line. Here's Bradshaw on the move, firing into the end zone. Complete the great Garrity for the touchdown. Bradshaw on the move, coming up toward the front, toward the line of scrimmage. And we've got Garrity beating Jerry Holmes. He took him right out of his suit. And the touchdown scored by Greg Garrity on the pass from Bradshaw. And I tell you, an interesting thing in the backfield again. Once more, Gastineau apparently on his way to get to Bradshaw. But Brown, I think, is playing tricks with him. He lets him go in a little bit. Then he reaches back and he picks him off and drives him back. Pass Bradshaw, who steps forward, throws the pass. Big six. All right, here's the holder, Colquitt. The ball is down. Garrity kicks the point and we have a timeout with the score seven to nothing you're listening to Steelers football on mutual a one-hour phone call from Norfolk, Virginia Beach to New York City could cost as much as $25. So remember, Walter, do your laundry. Don't mix whites and colors. Yeah, Ma, only... yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm really glad you phoned again. But I gotta run now. Oh, no, Walter, kid. do you uh, like living in a big city? Yeah, Mom, yeah, yeah, I do. I mean it. Look, Someone I else wants uh, to uh, get on the phone. Hello? Hello? 
So Terry Bradshaw, in his first appearance since last January, has driven the Steelers 77 yards on eight plays to a touchdown. He got it going with a 25-yard pass to Benny Cunningham. Then Frankie Pollard raced 22 yards down to the Jets' 28. Franco took a swing pass and picked up nine yards. And finally, Bradshaw to Garrity, a 17-yard touchdown pass. And the Steelers are out in front. Ain't it sweet? Ray Garrity's first touchdown reception. So the rookie from Penn State has to be a happy young man. Kirk Springs down deep along with Preston Brown. For the Jets, the ball teed up at the 35 and Gary Anderson awaiting word from the Zebras to get it started. Steelers with a 7-0 lead. Here is the kickoff and it is coming down deep. Four yards from the end zone. Brown with the ball, the five, the 10, the 15. He is caught and rolled to the turf. And again, it is David Little. Down there doing a great job, and he got him around the 17-yard line. Yeah, Brian, taking that ball, as you said, four yards deep in the end zone and uh, choosing to risk the return. David Little playing good football on that kick coverage team. So the Jets start rather in the hole at their 17-yard line. The Jets have gone nine quarters without allowing a touchdown. Touchdown. So in the 10th quarter, the Steelers break that magic. The ball is at the Jets 17. First down and 10. Two tight ends, Jerome Barkham and Mickey Schuler. And Wesley Walker set out to the right with a wing back on the right side to come out of the eye. Back goes Richard Todd. Todd has time to fire to the far side. Caught on the sideline over at the 30-yard line by Mickey Schuler. Schuler had hooked at the sideline, got outside at Wayne Woodruff. And immediately, Woodruff came over to push him out of bounds. It is first down for the Jets at the 30. So Richard Todd is now three for four, and the Jets have their second first down. They've got both of them throwing the football as the Steelers so far have pretty well bottled up the Jets' running game. Playing that three-man front against the run, the four-man front against the pass, an occasional blitz. They blitz once today. Look out, Lamb Jones is in the ball game. 5'11", 180. He is speed. Wing back right, Jones to the left. And the handoff goes to Freeman McNeil. Hitting just off the left side with power. Up over the 30 to the 33-yard line. Picks up three yards. Robin Cole, Lauren James make the stop along with Jack Lambert. So, the ball is at the Jets' 33-yard line. It will be second down and seven. And that... Quick touchdown by the Steelers had to give the Steelers defense a lift because, of course, over these past three defeats that they've suffered, that defense has been playing against uh, terrific odds, uh, having little hope that their offense could get a lot of points. That's got to give that defense a lift. Three down linemen. Gary Dunn right in the middle of that defensive front. Here's Todd under pressure. Dumps it over the line of scrimmage, completes it to Marion Barber, and he goes up to the 40-yard line. Lauren Caves makes the tackle, but Barber has a first down. So Richard Todd, equal to the task, dumps the ball over the line of scrimmage, and they pick up the first down. Officials, time for a measurement. Now they're going to measure on the first down, but it looks as though uh, Barber picked it up. Todd just dumping that toss over the line as uh, the pressure was converging on him from the Steeler defense. Yep, it is a first down at the 39-yard line. We've got 3.59 remaining in the first period. The Steelers lead it 7 to nothing. Marion Barber out and Lamb Jones and Wesley Walker are both in there and the two tight ends, Barkham and Schuler. You got two tight ends, two wide outs, and McNeil is the lone setback on first and ten. Todd handing it off to McNeil. He breaks the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Running to the left, cuts up field, goes over the 40 to the 41-yard line. Freeman McNeil stopped by Merriweather and Lambert. They're placing the ball down at the 41-yard line. A gain of almost two yards. We pause now for station identification. This is the Mutual Steelers Radio Network. More than just a radio station, 1250 WTAE Pittsburgh. I'm Jack Fleming with Myron Cope. We're at Shea Stadium in New York. The Steelers lead the Jets 7-0. Temperature rising through the 40s. Sun shining brightly here in the New York area. Nice day for football. Richard Todd dropping back right up the middle. Lost by Mickey Schuler. Threw a little 
pull behind him, and Schuler reaching up with two hands had to reach back. And it wasn't a fair chance for him. Ron Johnson covering didn't figure in it. It was at the 50-yard line. And uh, John Goodman hobbles off the field. He, he's been playing some fairly active football in this game this afternoon. Statistically, he has not had a good season. And you could say he has not had a good season, period, with only 10 tackles. But today I noticed he, he was down in there uh, expending the energy all right, but now he seems to have an ankle injury, and he's over on the bench. Kenny Lewis in the ball game, the third-year man from Virginia Tech. Scott Durking is in, the seven-year veteran from Purdue. And back goes Todd, firing deep downfield, and it is almost picked off. Rick Woods got into the air at his own 36-yard line, broke up the pass, knocked it into the air, and the intended receiver, Lamb Jones, who had been overthrown, was almost in position to get it. But it is incomplete. Oh, my, oh, my. Well, that was a uh, sure interception. Woods, Woods, what's my Woods, Woods, your ball's in your hands. Fourth down and nine. All right, the Jets got to give it up again. Coming out of the shadows into the sunfield. That'll do it. Chuck Ramsey standing at his own 26. The punt will carry right to left. Paul Scancy downfield at his own 20. Ramsey kicked the air out of the football the last time around. Here it goes. Not as good. Coming down at the 24. Scancy giving ground, running to his left. Cutting up over the 25, and he's tripped up at around the 27 or 28-yard line. His momentum was taking him to the far side of the field. John Woodring got to him first. Steelers have the football back. They lead 7 to nothing. There's a timeout. Now this for Honda and Mem Racket Club. Bradshaw took the Steelers on a touchdown drive on their last possession, and now they've got the ball back again at their 28-yard line on this beautiful day uh, in Shea Stadium. I thought you were going to say this beautiful day in Chicago. <laughs> the old Don McNeil line. Well, how do you like Bradshaw's arm so far? I think what is nice is his timing. His, his arm timing is that, sufficient, and his timing looks neat. It's very nice. It's just... This is very nice. All right, here they come again. Brad Shaw. He's got Franco and Frankie Pollard behind him. Strong left formation. Give is to Harris. Harris hitting him in the middle, and he finds solid resistance. Headed up by John Woodring. Two yes. linebackers, Woodring and Crable. Woodring filling the hole there nicely. The Jets up front have been tough of late. Uh, their secondary has made very few tackles. That tells you that their front line, their front four, and their linebackers are playing solid football against the run. Gate of two, it is second down and eight. Split backs are wide as Brad steps in under center. Mike Webster snapping the ball. Keep in mind, Emil Borey's playing in place of Steve Corson. And there's a pass fired to the far side, pulled in by Pollard over the 40 to 45. He lost it out of bounds at the 48. It's his ball. Now I spotted down that snap, Borey's. What a job he was uh -huh. doing that time. Uh -huh. He was doing a job. He drove Joe Klecko three yards back. I don't he get to watch it too often through the glasses. I'm afraid of them, but they're so far out of the county over there, I've been using them. And I got a good shot of Mr. Borey's at work. Well, anyhow, the ball is now out at the 42, 43, no, what is it, the 47. Again, this field angles away from us. But it's first down at the 47-yard line on the toss to Frankie Pollard. They line up in the eye formation. Here's a gift to the eye back. Pollard, Franco blocking, cuts behind the block, drives over the 50 to the 45. Takes it down to the Jets, 42 and a half yard line, and Evo Borey's pulling, started it all. Mark Gastineau got a piece of the tackle on that one. And that is going to be very near to a first down in Jets territory. The referee calls for a measurement. The Steelers are leading seven to nothing, and the clock shows. A minute 36 to play in the first half, the first quarter. It is a first down, you betcha, at the 43-yard line of the Jets. A first down by the nose of the ball as Frankie Pollard, after picking up 18 yards on a pass, now picks up 10 on the run. Frankie in with 39 yards on three carries, rushing. Garrett is into the ball game. Wideouts are getting head-to-head -head coverage. Hand off to Harris. Sweep right. Turns the corner. 40, 35, 30. Down to the 25 and on to the 24. 
Marty Lyons gets the tackle. Wolfley pulling and blocking on that one. And Harris brings the ball to the 24. And the Jets must be a little bit surprised at what they're seeing with Franco. The old guy who has not been drawing rave notices for three weeks turns it on. Now Chuck Knoll said indeed this past week that Franco has been struggling. And uh, now, though, Franco uh, on that sweep, well, he found lots of daylight. In fact, uh, he had Wolfley moving well downfield ahead of him, 10 yards downfield ahead of him. Wolfley pulling nicely and the play working to perfection as the Jets had no run support on the left side of their defense. So the Steelers have the ball at the 24-yard line of the Jets. They're leading 7 to nothing with a minute and 9 left in the first period and Terry Bradshaw the quarterback is driving them for more. Frankie Pollard according to J.D. put a block on Mark Gastineau that took America's number one modeler of jeans aside from that girl that models Calvin Klein's took him right out of the game but he'll be back. He's not injured. Shook him up a little. Gastineau, a five-year veteran from East Central Oklahoma. He is having a spectacular career with the Jets. Handoff, fake, second man around. Pollard breaks the tackle, running right to the left at the 25, the 20, and out of bounds at around the 17-yard line. It was a fake to Harris, a give to Pollard, who was coming around on a reverse situation. And on the misdirection play, they go to the far side, and Kenny Neal got shaken out of there, and Daryl Ray made the play. Kenny Neal, though, had gotten through Tunchilkin, but Frankie Pollard would have none of Kenny Neal's attempt to tackle him, Kenny Neal being the right defensive end. So the Steelers now pick up seven yards on a play that could have easily been a five-yard loss. Mm ha everything's working. Steelers, a strong right. Tight end, Benny Cunningham. The quarterback is Terry Bradshaw. You remember him. Handoff is to Pollard, and Pollard scrapping to get over the 15. He's down to the 14. He should have a first down. He's running like he shot out of a cannon, he Jack. I'm telling you. I mean, Kenny he's Neal a... on the tackle. 6'4", 255-pounder, and that should be a first down, Myron. Chaz Knoll says, you know, you got to rest Frankie Pollard because he plays such a punishing game, which is to say he punishes not only the other guy, but he punishes himself because he is just totally reckless, and that is how he is running today. They're going to measure to see if the Steelers have yet another first down. It is. You betcha. Another first down by, uh, let's say, half of the football. All right, first down 10 at the Jets' 14-yard line. Steelers line up. Benny Cunningham to the right in a strong right formation. Bradshaw, quick shot, lays it out to the right side for Hawthorne. He can't get it. The flag goes down. He was interfered with by Bobby Jackson. Hawthorne was interfered with. That will put the ball at the one-yard line. Oh, no question about it. We got a flag back upfield. Uh-uh. Because it was an alley-ooper. That's what it was. But Hawthorne was being held by Jackson in the end zone. He was, the ball was right there for Hawthorne. But we've got two flags, one in the end zone and one at the line of scrimmage. Oh, they offset each other. Steelers were offside. bringing the ball back. Well, it was clear-cut interference. But we had the uh, offside uh, situation, and we will run that one over again. Back at the 14-yard line. First down and 10. Mark Gastineau is back in there, incidentally, giving them Gastineau and Klecko and Lyons and Neal. Talk about young players. Gastineau in his fifth year, Klecko in his seventh, Lyons in his fifth, and Neal in his third. Over the ball, Webster. Wideouts both ways, a slot man to the left side and a single running back. Bradshaw's back. He runs forward. He's got room. Heading for the outside and goes down at the 11. Gastineau and Woodring. Now I would say that their 
Barry seemed a little more tentative than he used to. Yeah. He, he had a few yards downfield, but he elected to uh, go down and save the day. Yeah, he only picked up about three yards, but he wasn't running as Bradshaw used to run. So he gets a three-yard gain, second down seven. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Pittsburgh seven, the New York Jets nothing. Now this for Newsweek and Delco Electronics. Well, the Steelers are leading seven to nothing, and a Steeler fan down below us up on the dugout waving a Steeler flag and attacked by Jets fans. Gave him a good scrap, however. Now they're talking it out. But here go the Steelers at the Jets' 12-yard line. They're moving up into the other county at the far end of the field to our left. Bradshaw in the little raw action. Slips the ball to Franco. Franco comes through the middle, and he's nudged it inside the 10 by inches. Slated out to Franco, and he appeared to be taking a drop. And Franco carried it right through the middle. So that sets the ball inside the Jets' 10. And the Steelers have to move it down almost to the four for a first down. Third and six. It is third down at six. Strong left formation. Bradshaw looks around. Mike Webster calls timeout. They didn't like what they saw. They have 11 players out there, but... There was a problem. Wayne Capers is in the ball game right now. And with a score, 7 to nothing in favor of the Steelers, we have a timeout. This is for International Harvester and Bush. So it's third down and six just inside the 10 yard line. You don't want to get too radical here because, of course, the Steelers have the reliable field goal kicker, Gary Anderson. So they don't want to do anything to jeopardize his opportunity to put up three points. And yet you've got Bradshaw in there. He's four for seven, and the Steelers have moved that football for sure. All right, here they come out of the huddle. Jets with a four-down lineman. Steelers with a single setback in Harris. Bradshaw dropping back. Here comes the rush. Fires it down right near the goal line. It is pulled in by Calvin Sweeney for the touchdown. Sweeney just coming across on a nice slant pattern. Was wide open at the one-yard line. Greg Shaw planted it in his chest, and it's a touchdown. Benny Cunningham took the safety man, Ken Shroy, into the end zone down the middle, clearing it out for Calvin coming across for the soft pass over the middle. A beautiful job indeed. The Steelers lead by two touchdowns. They're going to make it 14 to nothing with this extra point attempt. Here comes the mighty might. Gary Anderson, he kicks at the post to the left. It is up. It is good. So the Steelers travel 71 yards in 10 plays. And with 15 seconds going off the clock, they lead the Jets 14 to nothing. We have a timeout. This for Gulf Oil. I've been gone for much too long. Now I'm going home to star-filled nights and soft firelight. Yes, but so far, it's like old times. The Bradshaw magic back, and the Steelers are leading 14 to nothing. And here they go as Gary Anderson kicks off. Well, now uh, there's a little delay. Boy, the pass protection for Bradshaw has been spirited on one play. That, uh, and a swing pass to his right to Franco that picked up nine. Clear on the other side of the field. This was early in the first period. I saw Twin Shilkin just flatten Kenny Neal on a block that really had it was irrelevant to the play. But it shows you how those linemen are playing. Here is the kickoff. Heading down to Brown at the 10. Makes a great move from over the 15 to 20 and up to the 30-yard line. Henry Odom came charging down there. Brown put a move on him that made him look like he'd gone uh, absolutely invisible. Washington and Woodruff finally got him, and they're going to mark the ball. I was screened off from that one at the near sideline, right around the 30-yard line, first down and 10. Uh, during the timeout period, Jack Lambert, the sheriff, 
many counties in Ohio, and an honorary member of the Pittsburgh Police Force was appealing to the New York Police to stop the fans from throwing things out of the stands. Here is Todd, dropping it over the line of scrimmage, and the receiver, Freeman McNeil, paid the price. Lauren Taves hit him solidly. And now the uh, loyal Jet fans are beginning to boo. It's early in the ball game for that. Well, if the Steelers can get after Todd real good, as I said, uh, he's the kind of guy, uh, he, he, you know, if he doesn't get off to a good start, he's liable to just have a horrible day. He's tough when he's on, but he's terrible when he's off. So they want to get on him. They've sacked him once in the football game thus far. Second down, and eight. Here's Todd. Deep handoff to McNeil. McNeil running to the left, tries to cut back. Ran out to the left, and he got into trouble. Keith Gary was out there. He made a cutback, and he ran right into the arms of Edmund Nelson, among others. And down he comes at the 34-yard line. So it is going to be third down now and about six yards to go. Oh, it was a nice play, play by uh, Keith Gary because Chris Ward, the big tackle, was blocking him, but Gary closed off the outside and reached in and managed to get a piece of it uh, McNeil to slow him down. So now it is third and seven for the New York Jets. They trail 14 to nothing. The Jets have Wesley Walker, Lamb Jones, and Derek Gaffney all in there. Three wideouts. Now they're calling a timeout. Yeah, they just broke the huddles. Todd stood up, called a timeout, and went over to talk to Joe Walton. So the Jets are having a little confusion themselves. Each team has now used up a timeout with the score. The Steelers had Cliff start warming up momentarily, and we received the word that Bradshaw took a blow on the forearm, on his right forearm, but the word from the bench is that he should be okay. Uh, and right now, I don't see uh, Cliff warming up. Do you, Lou? He, he's, uh, he's stopped to watch the football game. So it's third and seven for the Jets at their 34-yard line. All right, the Jets with Richard Todd at quarterback. Strong right formation. Here's Todd. Letting it fly down the far side of the field, and it carries out of bounds. Mel Blunt was one-on-one -on -one with Wesley Walker. Walker was on the fly down around the uh, Steeler 25-yard line. No way he could catch it because it carried out of bounds. Well, the Steelers were blitzing Todd, but he let that one fly. And the word on Todd has been that when he's in trouble, he will rely too heavily on Wesley Walker, that he'll practically ignore his other receivers. So in that spot of trouble, he tried to get the bomb to Wesley Walker. Now the Jets must punt. This will be the fourth punt for the Jets. Chuck Ramsey kicks of 33, 52, and 35 yards from left to right. Oh, Johnny Rogers almost got to it. He gets it away. Down to Scancy at his own 25, comes over the 30, and digs in up to the 34-yard line. Good return position that time for Paul Scancy with Ron Crosby making the stop for the New York Jets. Thus, there is a timeout of the ball game after a 41-yard punt and a return of nine yards. The score is 14 to nothing in favor of the Pittsburgh Steelers. You're listening to Steelers football on Mutual. Well, indeed, Cliff Stout is on the field. He's going to quarterback the Steelers, so the injury to Terry Bradshaw's arm now becomes more of a concern than, uh, the, than it was when it was first reported. The Steelers at their 34-yard line. The Jets have had to punt four times in this football game. The Steelers have punted only once. All right, let's see if Stout can keep it moving. Bradshaw standing on the sidelines along with Mark Malone as Scott hands it off to Pollard and Pollard fights his way over the right side stopped apparently twice behind the line of scrimmage he keeps scampering and moving finally moves it up to the 40 yard line and another outstanding one by Frankie Pollard Daryl Ray gets the tackle for your veteran free safety from Oklahoma. It will be second down and four. Pollard breaking a tackle by Ken Shroy, and Shroy then picks himself up, and well after Pollard is done, jumps on Pollard. They should have flagged that guy. What are you doing, Shroy? You can't do that. 
with Stout, now quarterback, in place of the injured Terry Bradshaw. Out of the eye to give to the top of the eye to Pollard again. He is slipping by people. They got him in the arm, and the flag goes down. They apparently got the Steelers for holding. Marty Lyons made the tackle. Reached out and got Frankie by the arm and brought him down at the 42-yard line. And it's a holding call against the Steelers. I think it was Twin Shilkin holding Kenny Neal. So... The Steelers, instead of having third down and two, they're going to be facing second down and about 15. We're having difficulty picking up the refs, Mike, second here. But I... On the 30. I now you're getting the PA announcer now. Yeah. So we might as well take that out. We were getting uh, one of their recorded commercials coming off the scoreboard during the timeout. Stop back. Stop firing to Pollard up at the 38 yard line and hitting him. Pollard coming down and a square in and stop. Hitting right on the numbers. Bob Crable makes the tackle and that brings them back to the 38 yard line. First pass for Cliff Stout. All right, it gets nine yards back, so it's third down and five. Uh, yeah, third and five at the uh, 39 yard line. Bradshaw hit five of eight for two touchdowns. Do you believe that? Mm. That was all in one quarter. No, it was in two quarters. Slipped over into the second quarter. Here's Cliff going to the far side, and now he got a penalty marker down, and he is off target over there to the far side with Calvin making a move to the outside. Well, we get another penalty against the Steelers coming up if the Jets choose to take it. Illegal use of the hand, number 62, offense, hands to the face. Penalty decline, fourth down. Well, they kneel, they nail a Twin Shilkin again, the illegal use of the hands, but the Jets decline the penalty, so the Steelers will punt. Downfield, they've got Kirk Springs. He's from Miami, Ohio, in his third year. Craig Colt was standing at his own 26. There's a the punter comes the rush. He gets it away. Sends it downfield to Springs at his own 20. Running laterally to the left. Over the 25, the 30, and out of bounds on the far side of the field at the 31-yard line. Springs on a 41-yard punt. Brings it back 11 yards, and John Rogers forces him out of bounds. Well, the Steeler defense has a 14-0 lead. And that is the legacy that uh, Terry built for them before he got hurt. Now, let's see what it means. Bradshaw's got that hand wrapped. The right hand. Todd, right over the line of scrimmage, up to the 36-yard line. It's his target. Pass completed, Jerome Barkham, Lauren Taves, and Jack Lambert bring him down. They mark it at the 37-and-a-half yard line. And, of course, if the Steelers could hang on to this lead today, and if Cleveland should be upset in Houston tomorrow, the Steelers would have the divisional title. They'd win it this weekend. Richard Todd with one setback. He's got two tight ends. He's got a wide outs in both directions. Short drop. Fires behind his man. And Lamb Jones had to dive back for the ball. Did he get the first down? Uh, I think he did. It's going to be close because he threw it behind him. It is completed for a first down. We pause now for station identification on the Mutual Steelers radio network. More than just a radio station. 1250 WTAE, Pittsburgh. He's very lucky to complete that one. They had had three first downs early. That is their fourth. And the handoff to Freeman McNeil. He slants off the left side and moves the ball to the 45-yard line. He'll get about three yards out of that carry with Gary Dunn down at the bottom, along with Lauren Taves. Todd, of course, working on that short stuff on this possession and hoping to open up the Steeler defense to soften it up so that Freeman McNeil can get going because Freeman thus far has not been having a big day. All right, he picks up, let's say, three yards on that play, so it's second and seven at the 45-yard line. Bradshaw and Stout talking, or rather Bradshaw and Stout's out. 
Stout's down there. He's not out on the field. They're talking right now on the sideline. Pot is out there. Flips it out into the right flat. Completes the pass to McNeil. The flag goes down behind the play. McNeil comes up over the 45 to the 47 and is brought down at the near side of the field. Tackle made by Lauren Taves. But there's going to be a penalty against the Jets, I do believe, yeah, Jack. Yeah, I saw the penalty marker go down back there. Gary Dunn putting Amen. pressure on Richard Todd and decking him in no uncertain terms just as he got rid of that football. But here's a penalty that could hurt the Jets badly. Let's get the call. Holding. Number 62, offense, second down. All right, Joe Pellegrini is called for holding up in that offensive line. So the Jets now are back at their 35-yard line, second down and 17. Jets lining up now on second down. Two tight ends. Todd rolls a little to the right, stops and fires back to the other side. Picked off by Rod Johnson. Down to the 30, the 25, the 20, the 15, the 10. Brought down inside the 10 yard line. Rod Johnson picked off that softly thrown pass. Brought down by Wesley Walker. That pass intended for Mickey Shore, the tight end, and Johnson suddenly appeared in front of him, right in the path of the football. So he picks off that ball, and he heads down that right side line, and he takes it down to the nine-yard line, where the Steelers are sitting pretty. And with the 14 to nothing lead, they have a chance to make it ah, a nice, big, fat three-touchdown lead. All right, Cliff Scott remains in the football game. Bradshaw again is injured and on the sideline. Stout lines them up. Gives the ball to Pollard. Pollard looks for an opening and he can't find it. He is there. He ran into the arms of Gastineau. Got him at about the 14 yard line. Loss of five yards on the play. Second down now and 14 to go. Second and go. Stout steps under center. He's got a strong right formation, and Harris, uh, the lone setback, is set to the strong side. Pitch to Franco. He's a blocker. Ronnie trying to turn the corner, and he is out of bounds on the far side at the 11 and a half yard line. Well, it's an interesting play where he sets Franco off to the right and pitches him the ball, and he runs to his right, but Franco did not turn on the steam. And the Jets had to play pretty well covered, but Franco had to turn it on, and uh, he seemed to be cruising in, uh, in low gear. So the ball's at the 11, third down. A big play for Stout. He's got Garrity wide left. He's got Calvin in the slot left. He looks right and goes back to the left, and there's a crowd over there trying to go to Calvin Sweeney in the corner of the end zone. And Calvin had drawn Ken Shroy along with Johnny Lynn, the nickelback, so he had a crowd in the corner. The pass was incomplete. Yeah, they sent Benny Cunningham over the middle, uh, but uh, he was somewhat covered. I'm not suggesting that he was wide open, and uh, Cliff chose to go the other way into the left corner. So Gary Anderson is on for chip shot field goal. He'll kick from the 19. Set up by Ron Johnson's third interception of the year, the 26th of the season for the Steelers. Point of the kick is the 19, a 29-yard attempt at the post to the left. The kick is apparently good, but there's a flag on the play. Now let's see, that could, um, it's not worth the first down. is against the Jets. They were offside, apparently. And the Steelers will say, we like the three points. Penalty is declined. Score the, uh, 
down. The penalty would take them the inside the 10, but it would leave them uh, still with about eight yards to go. So they had to kick up there successfully. They declined the penalty. That's a 29-yard field goal by Gary Anderson with a score 17 to nothing in favor of the Pittsburgh Steelers. We have a timeout. This for International Harvester and Honda. In the field and over the road, International will be there to carry the load. International Harvester, we're on track and moving ahead with one of the most fuel-efficient cab overs in the business. Brad's got his uh, warm-up jacket off. Here's the kickoff by Anderson. Very, very high. Coming down at the 8. Brown with the ball. Running to his left along the 10. Giving Brown. He's brought down. He's lost the ball. It's doubled. It's in the air. And they recovered. And they're tackled in the end zone. Oh, they call it dead at the 9. Odom and Merriweather and Sam Washington had buried Preston Brown. And the ball popped up into the air. He coughed that ball up right in the air. Now I'd like to get a look at this one again. Well, we're watching a replay. The replay looks like washed out soap here. But the ball lands at about the five, and a jet picks it up at the at the one, but they've given him the ball out at around the seven-yard line, isn't it? They wound up for an apparent safety, but uh, it wasn't called. Here's Big Neal giving the ball on the handoff. He tries the left side. He's to the ten-yard line. Now you've got them in the position that they've talked about all week. We talked with Woody about this, Myron. I'm sure you did, too. And that is you get a 17-point lead. Now it's impossible for them to go to that running game that has uh, absolutely beleaguered the Steelers. Uh, they can't get in there and just run time exactly. off the clock. That's right. right. And, and this may take Freeman McNeil out of this game, but, but still, it, it is a lot of time to play. And they, they should try to be patient. All right, Todd is back. Again, dumps it over the line of scrimmage to McNeil. McNeil is brought down along the 15-yard line. The, the initial hit was by Lauren Taves. And Lambert was over and Cole was over, and uh, the ball is at the 15-yard line. Now it's going to be third down and four. Jack, on that kickoff return, the only thing I can figure out is that they ruled that the whistle had blown before he fumbled that football. Is that your interpretation? That, that would have to be it because he had not hit the ground. Again, that play was at the uh, far end of the field. That was over in Nassau County. Back goes Todd. He drills one up to the 23-yard line from the to Jerome Barkham. Trying to get Barkham down unsuccessfully. It was finally whistled in. Now, who did they get upset over there? Dwayne Jack. Woodruff was working on the play with Lambert. Lambert came over to help and took Jerome by the helmet and was trying to wrestle him down. And uh, Jerome didn't care for that. So Jerome exchanged pleasantries with Jack Splat. Put the ball at the 24-yard line. First and ten. First and ten. They have picked up five first downs. Single running back, two tight ends. Richard Todd, the quarterback for the New York Jets. And Todd floats out to the right a little and fires a field, completing it to the 33 to Lamb Jones. He's knocked down at the 35-yard line. Jack Lambert makes the play. Now their strategy changes a little. And they're content to go with the, uh, the short passes. They're working the sidelines and... And they've managed to advance the ball twice now. First down. Richard Todd now 8 for 16, according to my unofficial stats. Steelers leave a gap in the right side of their defensive leg. Gap is filled by Taves in a down position. Steps in there. Here's Todd firing out to the left. They try to set a screen up out there for Wesley Walker and uh, nothing. Well, what happened is Taves not only filled that gap, but then filled all the room in, in Todd's face. I mean, he was in there like a shot with his hands all over Todd's face, and uh, Richard Todd simply threw the football blind. Second and 10 from the 35. 
Well, the old rascal from the bio stepped out here today to start this ball game and fired up this entire club. Here is Todd, and he is sacked by Robin Cole. Now Cole and Gary are beating each other. That looks like they're in a fist fight, but actually they're just hammering on each other in joy. Robin Cole. Oh, and that's a nice sack. That's a big loss. That takes the football clear back to about the 25, let's call it the 27-yard line of the Jets. It'll be third down, 18. That's a... No wonder you get uh, 26. No wonder you get so intrigued with those glasses all the time. <laughs> I get. I, I, I forget to call the game. I, I get to watching things that are so interesting out there. Yeah. But you need them to see that team this far away. Todd takes the snap. He pumps once, now lets it fly. And it's too high for his man at the 50-yard line. He was going for Lamb Jones down the middle. And Jones cannot get to the ball. Johnson and Woodruff over on the coverage. And the Nadiums are restless. And as Jones, the Jets will punt. Lamb was running free down the middle there, but if he caught that football, wow, was he going to take a hit? But uh, still in all, as you said, Jack, uh, caught uh, overthrew him. He really couldn't get to the football. So the Jets are punting. Chuck Ramsey. All right, Ramsey standing at his own 12-yard line. Downfield, the Steelers have one man deep, two up men. And here is the punt. Is it partially blocked? It's off the side of his foot at least. He gets it up to the Steelers' 45. They can do nothing with it, so it bounces down and out of bounds at the 35-yard line. A real ugly-looking punt, but he got the job done. He gets 38 yards out of it. The fifth punt by the Jets today. I find it interesting uh, that Ramsey, when he was talking about the difficulties of punting in Shea Stadium uh, in the tricky wins here, said that he learned early that the biggest problem was dropping the football uh, to uh, to his punting foot. Uh, he felt that if, if he held it high and then dropped it, that the wind would change the course of the ball before it fell to his foot. So he had to adopt a new technique and... and uh, practically lay the ball on his foot. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the wind, however, is not a big deal here today. It's just a gorgeous day. There's a switch picked up by Lou Kreck, Walter Abercrombie in his second year is in there along with Frank Pollard, the four-year veteran, both from Baylor. So Harris is not in the lineup right now to give to Abercrombie with a pulling blocker. Abercrombie is trapped. Could not get outside. Craig Wolfley had pulled and was trying to clear the way. Abercrombie was forced gradually to the outside, and John Woodring ran him out of bounds. And there's a loss of about two yards on the carry. He has John Woodring, the left linebacker, had made penetration and, and gave uh, Walter absolutely no room to run. Walter, coming off that knee injury, uh, suffered a couple of weeks ago. He did not play last week. Greg Hawthorne to the right. Abercrombie and Pollard in the backfield. That is the Baylor connection. The gift to Abercrombie. Now he's got Wolfley blocking, but he can't use that block. He tries to hit into the hole and is nailed at the 35-yard line by Joe Klecko. Klecko is one of those old street fighters from Temple, now seven years in the league. The same school of coaching that gave the Steelers a fellow by the name of Randy Grossman, who was deceptively tough. He is now a Mater D. The Mater D owns a restaurant. Well, he's the Mater D. I like to call him the classy name, Cope. You don't have to call him a restaurant owner. At any rate, the Mater D out of that same school of Wayne Harden coaching came Joe Klecko. Mater D works for the other Are guy. you still talking about the restaurant? Here's stop. Back. Fiery Hawthorne at the 45 over the 50 and down at the New York 48-yard line. Ken Troy made the tackle. That's number 10 in the first down column. And it's Cliff's fourth pass, and he has completed two. It's a pickup of 17 yards, and hey, Frankie Pollard made it possible because he picked up the blitz at the last instant, and he allowed Cliff to get that ball away. So the Steelers again are into Jets territory at the 48-yard line. First and 10 from the Jets, 48. Big third down play. 231 on the clock. Out of the eye formation. Give is to Abercrombie running to the right. He's got room. He turns downfield. He's over the 40 and out of bounds around the 37 and a half yard line. Ken Shroy made the play. 
And that time you saw Abercrombie get the running room, and you saw how he could use it. And he took off and picks up a first down. Now the Steelers have the luxury of uh, deciding whether they're going to run with the football or use the pass. And they've got 223 to play in the first half. They lead 17 to nothing over the Jets. And the ball is back at the New York 38-yard line. Hawthorne to the right and Calvin to the left. Each of them picked up nose to nose by the defensive backs. Back goes Stout, firing out to the left. Abercrombie was all alone out there, took the pass, and was hit by Lance Mell at the 40, and he goes down at the 38-yard line. I tell you what, he came within an ace of getting away from Mel on that one. Well, Mel has had a heck of a year, seven interceptions, and he, he's tied for the AFC lead in interceptions, and he has more interceptions than any linebacker in the National Football League. He's making Two tackles minutes. all over the place this year, having a big year. Two-minute warning in the ball game with the score Pittsburgh 17, the Jets nothing. You're listening to Steelers football on Mutual. A one-hour phone call from Norfolk, Virginia Beach to New York City could cost as much as $25. So remember, Walter. The Cliffs died all season. Bradshaw, a moment ago, was talking things over with Cliff over on the sidelines. The guy that's really talking to the Pittsburgh bench area is Jerry Holmes. He is hot-dogging it and finally strolling up to near his position is Mel Blount, who also wears number 47. He must have said, you know, what's, what's with you, man? And Holmes has had a running conversation going with Garrity. Now he's picking up Sweeney. Could you keep an eye on him? Now he drops off of Sweeney a little bit. I'll watch him. He is a mean rascal. Here's the handoff to Pollard. They reverse the ball to Hawthorne coming to the left. Over the 35, the 30, the 25, the 20. And he is brought down at the 18. And let me hasten to say that he was brought down by Bob Crable. That Holmes did not bring him down. He got there to stand over the play. Well, Crable what, made the tackle. You told me keep an eye on him, and what happened is he pulled back on uh, on Sweeney, and Sweeney ran a fly and took him downfield, which opened up this whole sideline for the run by Hawthorne from right to left. Beautiful play. Now he's got Sweeney again. Here's the give to Pollard. Same play, only Frankie keeps it. Flag's going down. They're swarming over Pollard. Klecko is over there to lead that defensive play. And that's a holding call. Against Pittsburgh. Well, we've got a minute and 18 seconds remaining in this first half, and now referee Bob McElway moves the football back to the 29-yard line. Number 89, offense, first down. And uh, he calls the holding penalty against Benny Cunningham. Back to the 29-yard line, first down for the Steelers. They have got to get down to mm, about the 8 or the 7-yard line to get a first down. How many times have they used Hawthorne on the reverse this year? Not too often. No. I've talked to him about that in training camp. Boy, he can go. Here's Franco with the ball. Running to the left. He is trapped. And he scoots out of bounds on the near side of the field near the 25-yard line. Lance Mel over on the play. And you just may see the Steelers here play very conservatively, running the football. Uh, because, again, they have Gary Anderson, and he can hit from this distance. Ball is at the 26-and-a-half-yard line. Second down and 19 yards to go. And the clock is stopped on the out-of-bounds play with a minute 13. Here they come, Cliff Stout at quarterback. Garrity to the left. Calvin is in the uh, slot on the left side. And back goes Stout. Garrity makes a move, and they get in the meantime to Stout. Get a penalty marker down. And that's what may hurt, because that could take uh, Anderson out of field goal range if it's a holding call. Now Garrity is... Uh, oh! Face mask call against the Jets. That's good. Garrity's patting Holmes on the seat of the pants now. Garrity made a sensational move on Holmes, and it freed himself on a curl at about the 15-yard line. In the meantime, back at the ranch, Cliff was in trouble. Five yard 
face mask pass against the defense. Still second down, not an automatic first down. All right, the ref does not identify who committed the face mask infraction, but it is not an automatic first down. It's not a flagrant face mask. So the Steelers are second down at the 27-yard line. Leading 17 to nothing with a minute and eight seconds to play in the first half. At Shea Stadium in New York, Stout is back. Stout chased out of the pocket. Stout thrown back at the 39-yard line. Gastineau and Woodruff got it. Mark Gastineau and John Woodring. So Gastineau cracking the ice. It's his first sack of the day. He gets half a sack, I would suppose, on the play. He had 18 coming into this game to lead the lead. Now the ball is at the 38-yard line. Ouch. They'll pick up some yardage here for the field goal. Third and 30. And number 12's got his helmet on now. Here's Stout running forward. He's got moves to go. Down over the 30, the 25, heading for the sideline, and he goes out of bounds on the near side of the field at about the 24-yard line. Would appear to get him back in the field goal range. Lance Bell and Jerry Holmes made the play on Cliff. Now... It was a 15-yard Bill no Blunt's out on the field, and J.D. said he was chasing Jerry Holmes off the field. <laughs> and Johnny Lynn came over to stick. Why was Blunt out there? He can go out, I guess, on the change of teams. Gary Anderson will attempt a 40-yard field. Melvin is upset. He doesn't like what he sees in Holmes. He ran him off the field. Okay, for the 30-yard line, it's going to be a 40-yard attempt. Ball is down. The kick by Gary Anderson. Log it up. High it up. It is good. And the score is 20 to nothing in favor of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, Jerry Holmes is a guy who is uh, he's a talkative fellow uh, besides being rambunctious on the field. And he said recently that he does not appreciate the fact that Gastineau and Klecko get so much attention in New York. And he indicated he is not happy with Joe Walton's coaching and he said that when he leaves uh, the Jets and he is coming to Pittsburgh mind you for the USFL season he has signed with the Pittsburgh Maulers and he has promised that when he leaves the Jets he is going to have a lot more to say but uh, today he's uh, it's debatesville with he and Mel uh, Blunt the Steelers with a 20 to nothing lead and 28 seconds remaining in the first half and isn't it nice you betcha been a long while since we watched a Steeler game like this. Gary Anderson to kick. Preston Brown and Kirk Springs. Kick off will carry right to left. Brown and Springs are down deep. Anderson has the teed up at the 35, and here comes the kickoff. High and long. And that is Brown, a yard deep in the end zone, out of the 5, the 10, the 15, not past it. He stopped right at the 15-yard uh -oh. line. Holmes was almost into it again. Now this Holmes is holding his hands. What a show he's putting on today. He was into it with Brian Hinkle. And uh, let's see, I believe it was Paul Stanton. Lambert Spence. just pointed to Holmes and said, get off the field. <laughs> he's out there trying to jaw with Lambert, or rather with uh, Blunt again. And the sheriff just put his arm up and said, off. <laughs> Holmes must be out of it today. The only th recollection I have of him at West Virginia was a tough defensive back and the flags falling on the sideline. Here is a great catch by Lamb Jones. 35, 40, 45, and down at the 46. Lamb Jones coming down and slanging in quickly made a remarkable catch. Stopped by Lauren Taves. Johnny Lamb Jones. Oh, he slipped inside. Donnie Shevin went up for that football. What a catch it was. But the Jets are still a distance away uh, from even field goal range. And at this point in the game... Maybe they were using this Holmes as a decoy to take our attention <laughs> off of the game or something. Well, they've got the football at their 45-yard line. 11 seconds remaining in the half. 
good place for a turnover. The, one of the sweet things about this uh, game from the Steelers' viewpoint today is that they have been able to take Freeman McNeil out of the uh, Jets' offense by uh, scoring so much so early. But even before that occurred, they were shutting down Freeman McNeil pretty good. Picked up over 100 yards against the Colts last week. He's been really coming on since he returned from the injury list. But the Steelers have removed him as a factor, at least so far. All right, here comes the jet attack. They shift out of the eye with split backs. And Todd with 11 seconds drops back. Todd has time to fire to the far side of the field. Picked off at the Steeler 35. Here's Dottie Show with the ball, running laterally, looking for the 40, the 45, the 50, the Jets 45. And Dottie Show on the interception brings it back to the Jets 42, tackled by Wesley Walker. organization and the crowd. What do you think? Well, he was throwing Richard Todd West to Liam Jones, but he threw to Donnie Shell instead. He wanted Liam, but he got Shell, and Shell starts running across the field saying, boys, gather in here. Give me a cordon of walkers. You, Rob and Cole, fall into place there, and, and whatever other guys, Johnson, I think, you know, but uh, 8 o'clock ran out. Shell had visions of going 65 yards for a touchdown. I don't blame him. Well, we come to the end of a delightful first half here in New York with a score. 20 to nothing in favor of the Steelers. Now this for Topol Tooth Polish and the Beef Industry Council. My boyfriend doesn't complain much, but he did not mention that smoking was staining my teeth. Okay, the ball clubs are right on the field to resume play as we get ready for the second half here with the Steelers leading 20 to nothing. So with Bradshaw through for the day, well, the Steeler defense has its assignment. And they are now able to play the kind of defense that they prospered with in the earlier part of the season when they were intercepting uh, the football right and left and forcing fumbles because the Jets are in a position where they're going to have to throw the football. And already the Steelers have intercepted Richard Todd twice. Uh, the Steeler defense is not any longer in the position of having to defense the run all day as they've been having to do for the past three games. So uh, this is a, a promising situation here as the Steelers with a victory can clinch a wild card. And here is Jack Fleming with the play-by-play. -play. Jets kick it off, right to left, coming down. Odom at the 9, over the 10, the 15, swings left. Caught along the 17. Drives forward to the 19, and Rocky Cleaver made the tackle on him. And Odom is brought down at the Pittsburgh 19-yard line. First down, 10. Steelers on offense using Tunchilkin at left tackle in place of Ted Peterson, who is on the injured reserve right now. Craig Wolfley at left guard. Mike Webster at center. Emil Boris at right guard in place of Steve Corson. Larry Brown at right tackle, and Benny Cunningham the tight end. They're strong left. The running backs are Harris and Pollard. Split backs behind Cliff Stout in there in place of Bradshaw. Hand off to Pollard. Slips over the left side of the line on a cross buck. He's over the 20 and up to maybe the 22, 22 and a half yard line. Let's give him the 22. A gain of three yards. Bob Crable makes the stop. Second down and seven. Wide outs are... Greg Garrity and Calvin Sweeney. Let's see if they've changed on that at all. Hawthorne is out there and, and uh, Sweeney. And I apologize for not having first-half stats for you, dear listeners, but the Jets have not furnished them. They're not very slick here in New York. Out of the eye formation. Here's Stout giving it off to the top of the eye to Pollard. Shakes off one man, but he won't shake off two. He's caught at the 15-yard line and brought down. He was slowed down by Bob Crable. Then Marty Lyons closed in on him and got him. So the loss is back to the 15-and-a-half-yard line. And that's going to be third down and about uh, 15 yards to go. A loss of seven on the play. It is 20 to nothing at the start of the third quarter. And the Steelers are on third down and 14. All right, they've got Garrity in there playing to the left, and Calvin's in the slot left, and Hawthorne's to the right. And Stout is back. Stout's chased out of the pocket. they got Stout, and in a mob scene, he goes down to the 12-yard line. So Stout is sacked. Back at the 12-yard line. 
drive cover Cliff. Kenny Neal and Marty Lyons in there with the pass rush. Now we finally get official first half stats, but let's just put those aside for the moment because the Steelers must punt. Colt went back at the goal line. Greg Colt was standing at the goal line. Here's the snap and the punt left to right. It's a beauty. He's got Kirk Springs under it at his own 36-yard line. And he takes off to the right, skipping away from the tackler. Trying to get over the 40. He does to the 45 at the sideline. And out of bounds near the 50 in the uh, Jets bench area. So a fine run back on a 49-yard punt by Kirk Springs. Craig Bingham made the tackle. And the Steelers are screaming at the official, Tony Dungy in particular, because Nick Bruckner put a block on Henry Odom that was clearly illegal, wiping him out. He was the first man downfield covering the punt. So, all right, the Jets are at their own 49-yard line. Richard Todd, who went 11 of 19 in the first half, hands it off to Freeman McNeil and running to the right. McNeil is knocked down along the line of scrimmage by Lauren Taves and Dottie Shell. Let's see what they're doing in their uh, offensive line. We hadn't checked that out. Chris Ward is uh, playing a left tackle. Joe Pellegrini, second year man from Harvard at left guard. Guy Bingham at center. Dan Alexander from LSU at right guard, and Marvin Powell from USC at right tackle. They got two tight ends. And they got a flanker left, and a wing back to the right, and a single setback. And the handoff, and that's Freeman McDeal. They slash him up the middle, and he takes it into Steeler territory near the 45. Keith Gary gets the tackle. Incidentally, just real quickly on the first half stats, and because people might be wondering, Bradshaw was 5 for 8 for 77 yards and two touchdowns. Stout was 3 for 5 for 26 yards. Todd, 11 for 19 for 114 yards, but with two interceptions. Okay, enough of that. All right, now we've got the ball given to McNeil. McNeil breaks the tackle by Donnie Shell and turns the corner over on the sideline. He was knocked out of bounds by Dwayne Woodruff, the cornerback, and that should be a first down. Very near the Steeler 40-yard line. The ball is marked at the 40-and-a-half first down for the Jets. Their eighth first down of the ball game. The Steelers in with 12. Okay, I got my figures settled down now. All recorded. I can pay attention to this football game. Tom Coombs playing one of the tight end posts. Mickey Schuler is the wing back. The other wing, Jerome Barkham, is in motion to the right. The give is to Freeman McNeil, and they open up a hole over the right side for him. And he gets two or three yards on that play with a tackle made by Jack Lambert. Lambert was right there to grab him. Let's see where they marked the ball at the Pittsburgh 37. So he picked up around four yards. It's going to be second down and six. Steelers leading 20 to nothing. All right, the Jets in the green uniforms in a double wing formation with a single setback. In motion, Markham out to the right side. Todd is back, firing out to the left, and it is blocked coming out of his hand. Lauren Taves got up in the air. Lauren Taves, the linebacker, and swatted that ball down. So nice play by Taves, trying to rush the passer. All right, the clock showing 11.01 to play in the third quarter. The Jets kicked off to the Steelers, and the Steelers were ineffective on offense. Craig Colquitt got a good punt away, but they got a fine return back to midfield. So here they are in Steeler territory at the 36-yard line on third down, and about five and a half to go. Todd is back. Todd is hit. Blitzing. Wayne Woodruff got him back at the 46-yard line. Wayne Woodruff, blitzing, nailed Todd, barreled right into him. That's the third time that they've got 
to try the day. Wood rough on a slightly delayed blitz, find a clear lane right through. Nobody to lay a hand on him, so he was in there like a shot on Richard Todd, and it's fourth down back at the 45-yard line, and the Jets have to punt. Big play by Woodruff. The Jets were trying to get back into this ball game. Here's Ramsey in pump formation, standing at his own 40-yard line. Downfield, the Steelers have Scancy deep. He may get a block. He got it away. Now we have a flag on the play and a fair catch called for by Scancy at the 17. Is that Merriweather who came sailing in there that time? It was. New York had an illegal man downfield. Still downfield, number 48 on the kicking team. Penalties decline. First down. Steelers decline the penalty and will take the ball on a 38-yard punt, and they will get it back at their own 17-yard line. With a score 20 to nothing in favor of Pittsburgh, there is a timeout. Now this is for Motorcraft and the IT&T TV tune-in. Steelers should have. Uh, taken that penalty and made them the uh, Jets punt again rather than accept the football at their 17. But the rest of the booth says I'm uh, that, that, that uh, that's dumb cop thinking. So okay, here go the Steelers from their 17-yard line. In the third period, they lead 20 to nothing. In the meantime, the Jets are warming up a new quarterback, Pat Ryan, hmm. the backup for Todd. Hand off to Pollard, sweeping right, trapped along the 15 and thrown out of bounds. Frankie Pollard was just simply strung out. John Woodring made the play. Yeah, we got a little altercation along the sidelines there, but they separate the players. Frankie Pollard into it apparently with Crable, a middle linebacker, but Gastineau puts an arm around Frankie and says, all right, Frankie, go on back here in the huddle. Take it easy. Frankie Gastineau is a politician. Gastineau is uh, a team leader. Gastineau is right up front on everything, including those jeans. He looks better in jeans than you do. Well, a lot of people do. <laughs> Here's Cliff. Back, looking, firing, and fine try by Hawthorne as he uh, went diving down to the turf. Pass is rolled incomplete. His whistle dead. Now, what is the ruling? Jets come in there and jump on the play. Well, the back judge wasn't helping out very much. Ray Douglas, he appeared indecisive, and then Hawthorne ran him down. He hadn't signaled a call, and, and Hawthorne had cut the, cut the ball. He got up, and then he ran the back judge down while the back judge was looking for advice from another official. But what are they rolling, Jack? Incomplete pass. It's trapped. I saw that with the glasses, but I couldn't understand what the action was all about. Now that's the 14th pass thrown by Pittsburgh. Bradshaw went five of eight for 77 yards and two touchdowns. All right, the Steelers at their own 15. Stouts back, here comes the rush. Firing to the far side, it is picked off, intercepted at the 33-yard line by Ray. He's running, he's down over the 20, the 15, the 10, and he's going in for a Jets touchdown, but there are penalty markers down on the play. Well, Stout threw into double coverage. Not only was Darrell Ray back there, but Ken Schroy was as well. So Ray picks it off, but let's see what the flags are about. Well, they got a summit meeting out there. Every official on the field, team captains, team assistant captains. It's turning into a pretty tough game to call. scrimmage against the Steelers decline. That means the play stands. And then an illegal block on the return 
The Steelers will accept that, and that will nullify the touchdown run on the return. Let's see where they're going to put the ball. That was uh, intercepted by Daryl Ray. And the ball comes back to the 38-yard line. Low motion, offense, decline, illegal block, number 28, on the interception, return, first down. Knock to the 38-yard line. Pat Ryan, a 6'3", 210-pound six-year veteran from Tennessee, is in the ballgame. Ryan with a quick drop, throws sharply to the near side, in and out of the arms of the receiver, picked off by Mel Blunt. Wesley Walker had it. He was accosted by whom? Donnie Shell was right And he face. got a hand on it. Right. And the ball popped up, and Blunt comes up with the interception. Deflected from Shell to Blunt. Beautiful. The Steelers get out of trouble. Blunt is forced out of bounds. Well, let's see that where the ball is being brought in. A lot of action in this game right now. The ball is being placed down at the 37-yard line. Pittsburgh has it first and 10. Time out of the ball game with a score 20 to nothing. Pittsburgh, you're listening to Steelers football on Mutual. A one-hour phone call from Norfolk, Virginia Beach to New York City could cost as much as... And Bunt is now tied with Johnny Robinson and Bobby Boyd for eighth place on the all-time NFL interception list. Uh, it, this was his uh, second career interception against the Jets. Here go the Steelers at their 37. Steelers now have 28 interceptions as a team. Shell, Blunt, and Johnson have them so far today. Blunt got a big assist from Donnie on that one. Handoff goes to Franco Harris, and he wins his way through the middle. And he advances the football over the 40 to maybe the 42-yard line. Mark Gaston on Ken Schroy. Bring him down, mark it at the 43. A gain of six yards, second down, and a long four. And the Steelers, safe to guess, I think, that they're going to play conservatively on offense because they've got that 20 to nothing lead, and Stout has not fared awfully well here, and uh, they don't want to risk the interception unnecessarily, and they want to use up time, but they'll have to throw some. All right, Stout hands it off to Pollard, and Pollard cuts through the middle, and he's up to the 45. Pollard looked like he might have something going, and he lost his footing, and Lance Mel was right in front blocking his way as he submarined in there. And the ball is marked now at the 45-yard line. It's going to be third down, two and a half yards to go. So you've got some options on this play. The wideouts are Greg Hawthorne and Calvin Sweeney. Now they line up tight. So Hawthorne is set as the wing back on the right side. Rodgers and Cunningham are the tight ends. And the give is to Franco, and he slices off the left side, and he goes to the 50-yard line. Daryl Ray will get the tackle. First down, Pittsburgh. Franco on that play, running hard and looking as he did uh, early in this football game, early in the first period when he looked like the old Franco there, a moment, uh, player two or three. Uh, but uh, now the Steelers have a first down at midfield. Steelers are leading 20 to nothing. 7.40 to play in the third quarter. They're back to the 50-yard line, first and 10. Stout calling the signals. Stout with a play fake is back there, and he fires under pressure, and it is well behind Hawthorne. Oh, Gastineau and has that kick. Gastineau got to Stout. And Stout is down. Stout is shaking up. He's trying to get to his feet. Oh, I'm telling you, Gaston plowed into him. He, came, he was coming, but Stout is on his feet now. So it'll be second down and 10. Stout is three for seven throwing the football with one interception. On his way through there that time and got to clip. Good solid hit. Second down, 10. Benny Cunningham splits out to the right. They've got uh, Hawthorne flanked to the right. And out to the left is Calvin Sweeney head-to-head -head with Jerry Holmes. Big hole in the middle. Here comes Pollard down over the 40. He runs over uh, Holmes down to the 30, the 25, and out of bounds at the 21. Pollard, they opened it up through the middle. And he made 
His move through the middle, then he made his cut to the left. This put him one on one with Holmes. He ran over Holmes and finally was chased out of bounds down at the 21 or 22 by Woodring. Oh, a big gain of 20 some yards, almost 30 yards. Let's go at 28. And Frankie Power took the football on a draw play and he outran the linebacker, John Woodring. And then, as Jack told you, he trampled Holmes and took the ball to the 22 yard line. Big play for Pollard, who's having a heck of a game. Excuse me. I think your cigarettes are killing me. My doctor says you should give it up. No comment, huh? Well, I'm playing a football game here, Fleming. What is it? Stan Blinka is in the ball game. I was trying to say his name there, and I choked on a mouthful of smoke. Five-year veteran from Sam Houston, replacing Crable, who was shaken up. Ball is at the 21 and a half yard line. First down, 10. Four down linemen for the Jets. Stout with a short drop. Now runs with it. Here he comes to the right over the 20, the 15, the 10, and is knocked down at the 8. Lance Bell high, Ken Troy low. And it's remarkable how that lean developed for Stout. And he can do it. And he brought it right downfield, and the ball is being marked in around the eight. The way it developed was that Gastineau made the upfield rush, and Larry Brown took him right by Stout. He opened a lane for him. It was almost like it was a designed running play, which it was not, but that's how it developed, and it was beautiful, and the ball's at the eight. He also got a block from Franco Harris downfield. That didn't hurt him a bit. First down, 10. Give to Franco, digging through the middle. He's over to five, but the penalty markers go down. That means holding right in the middle. Ball is nudged inside the five. The penalty markers are down. The Steelers leading, in case you've just joined us, 20 nothing. Right guard, offense, first down. So the holding call is against the right guard who is in Emo there. Emo Boris. right now is in there. Yes, he started, of course, today for Steve Corson, who has a knee injury. First and goal. And he has been going up against Joe Klecko and doing a pretty good job. Emo Boris, only a second-year man. It's a big series for the Steelers right here. You know, if you can, if you can even get three out of this. That gets you out of that 21-point range. Big, big series. Hey, deep draw hand off to Franco, galloping out to the left, turns the corner at the 15 and goes out of bounds at the 13. Stout just drifting back, back, back and gave that deep hand off to Franco. Kenny Meal pursued him and got him at the 13-yard line on the far side of the field. Franco outrunning Lance Mel to the sideline. Mel, he, he is having a great year, as I've pointed out. But he's not a real swift linebacker. He's a guy with a real good uh, brain for the ball game. He can read plays well, but he's not real fast. And Franco beat him to the sideline, but it's still second and 15 at the 13. Garrity in. He's set to the left. Calvin's in the slot left. Blank right is Hawthorne. Here's Stout going to Betty for a touchdown. Betty horse collared in the end zone, held onto the football, and Cliff Stout hit him right under the post in front of Ken Troy. And it is a touchdown for the Steelers. And a touchdown for Cliff Stout, more importantly. Well, that ought to lift Cliff Stout's spirits, you betcha. And that was certainly an unusual situation I described. What did I say? Second and 15 at the 13. That's impossible. But Cliff has thrown a nifty 13-yard touchdown pass to big Benny Cunningham. Nice going stop. Colquitt holding at the 10, but a point after at the post to the right. Gary Anderson, the kicker. The ball is down, and the mighty might kicks it over the net. And it's caught by the secondary net, rolling around above the crowd. The score right now is Pittsburgh, 27, the New York Jets, nothing. We have a timeout. This for International Harvester and Kodak Camera. In the field and over the road, International will be there. Beating the Jets, 27 to nothing in the third period. Here we go. Here comes the kickoff, left to right. 
Down to the four. Take up by Preston Brown. Out over the 10. Swings right up over the 15 to 20. And brought down at the 25-yard line. He lost the football over there, but would have appeared to have been down. Who was there? David Little. What a job he's doing today on the coverage teams. Greg Best down there with him. They're having a little fun out there. Craig Bingham. Well, that's the third tackle that uh, Little has made today on kickoffs. Are we going to see Ryan or are we still going to see Todd? Who's out there? We've got a new quarterback, Pat Ryan. Yep, he was there for the last series. Oh, I'm sorry. And here's a play fake. Ryan is back. Fires down the field. Cut this time. Lamb Jones with the ball up the 45, the 50. Breaks the tackle. The 45 down to the 40 and on to the Steeler. 38-yard line. Run down by Robin Cole. Johnny Lamb Jones. Boy, what a, what a mover he is. Runs like a ghost. Thirty-six yard game on that pass play. Well, Ryan's first pass he threw was the interception by Blunt. Now his second pass is a thirty-eight yard gainer. Back he goes, Ryan, right down the middle. He's got a man there. That's Vicky Schuler, and he hits him. So they have moved the football now down to the Steeler 27-yard line. And Jack Lambert makes the tackle. Mickey Schuler gets that uh, reception. Ryan had uh, seen very little action prior to the day. He had, he had thrown the ball 22 times, completed 15 on the season. Jets moving in Pittsburgh territory. Jets trailing 27 to nothing. Ryan steps out of the pocket to the right, lets it go deep. Got a man in the end zone. Touchdown, New York. Liam Jones getting out beyond Wayne Woodruff down in the end zone. And the crowd loves it as Pat Ryan, the six-year veteran from Tennessee, brings them to life on this series. Yeah, he pumped it once to Liam Jones and then decided to give him more time to run down behind Woodruff. And perhaps with the pump, pull Wood, would rough up a little bit. And Jones got free nicely in the end zone. So the Jets have gotten on the board. Pat Leahy, who has not had an active day, at the goalpost to the left. Here's the kick. And it is good. So the score is 27 to 7 in favor of Pittsburgh. We have a timeout. This is for GMAC and Bush Beer. If you want it, what a car. If you really like it. Oh, wow, a sunroof. We can help you get it with GMAC. That's my car. If you've wanted a new GM car or truck, now is the time to get it. See your GM dealer. He offers convenient GMAC financing right in his showroom. If you really want it, we can help you get it. We're GMAC financing. I got it. Introducing the smooth, clean taste of the mountains. Bush. The best is coming your way, because now you can enjoy the taste of Bush beer right here. So come on now, don't just reach for any beer. Head for the only beer brewed to go down smooth as a mountain stream. Bush. Pat Ryan puts some spark in the New York Jets, takes them 75 yards and eats up 66 yards on two passes to uh, Liam Jones. So uh, the Jets now trail by 20. The Steelers have slightly more than one quarter to play to clinch a wild card first. 439 remaining in the third period. Well, I tell you, it's a strange crowd in this place, and uh, they got a lot of police in there looking at them. Here's the kickoff. Henry Odom muffs it at the five, picks it up at the goal line. Now he's looking for running room. It's not Odom. It is Timmy Harris way over there in the next county. He's nailed at the five-yard line. Tim Harris 
on the far side of the field, back in that corner. Tackled by Kirk Springs. He muffed it at the five, picked it up at the goal line, and was smothered at the five. And now the crowd getting into the ball game very much. Yeah, this uh, could give the Jets an additional spark. Just simply thinking. bounced out of Harris's hands. Now, now the Jets got to be thinking in terms of a turnover down there. Because should they score another touchdown, well, then anything's possible. And the crowd is chanting defense. 29 to play in the third quarter. 27 to 7. Hawthorne in motion from wide right to left. Handoff is to Pollard and on the sweep to the right he cuts up field and Ken Schroy brings him down. He'll get about three yards out of that uh, carry. Second down and seven yards to go. Frankie gets a block from Craig Wolfley pulling from the guard slot, but one block was not enough because there were two men to be overcome, so all right, the Steelers are still pinned down in the hole. Here yeah, they come out of the huddle. Hawthorne to the right. Calvin Sweeney to the left. Split backs. Here comes Pollard in motion to the right. And off is to Franco. And he comes up the middle the draw and he is stopped at the 10. Bob Crable back in the ball game, the middle linebacker, makes the stop. And Garrity is ready to come in for the Steelers. It's going to be third down and five and the Jets know pretty much what to expect right here. Third and five. you need is a five-yard gainer that will give you the first down and keep possession of the ball and keep that clock turning. Lights have been on since halftime. They play in total shade. Well, they open it up through the middle for Pollard, but he does not get the first down. So they use the draw, and Pollard comes galloping up there, but he's stopped just inside the 15 by Bob Crable. He needed about a half yard more for a first down. And Colquitt will be called upon to punt. Well, it was a safe play and not a bad play. It almost did the trick. Almost got it for them. Kirk Springs, who had a fine return earlier in this half of a Colquitt, a great Colquitt punt, and uh, he brought it back to the 50-yard line. So Springs is waiting downfield. Colquitt stands at his own two. Here's the snap to Colquitt. And he gets it away. Springs coming under it at his own 40. Up over the 45. Spins, goes down at the 47-yard line. He got away from Johnny Rogers, but he very quickly was in the arms of David Little. And he is brought down at the 46 and a half on a 46-yard punt. We have a timeout with a score. Pittsburgh, 27, New York 7. You're listening to Steelers football on Mutual. Let's go back briefly to Terry Bradshaw's injuries, a bruised forearm and a bruised elbow. It's worth remembering that uh, his, the off-season surgery he had was on, on the nerves in the vicinity of his elbow. So I don't know if that complicates matters. I'm not a doctor, but I thought I might point that out. Here are the Jets at their 47, first down. First down, 10 for the Jets. Run a man in motion to the left and back to the right. That's Lamb Jones. Handed off to Freeman McNeil. And McNeil scampering out to the right makes a cut-up field and goes to the 50-yard line. He's brought down by Jack Lambert and Dwayne Woodruff. And the ball is inside Pittsburgh territory at the 50. It is a gain of four yards. Woodruff having to hold his ground to close off the outside to Freeman McNeil, who was delivering about 2,000 fakes, but Woodruff had to give ground just to keep that outside closed off, and he didn't make the tackle, so it's second and six. And they come out of the huddle. Bingham the center. Their quarterback is Pat Ryan. Came on in relief of Richard Todd. Ryan pitching it out to McNeil. McNeil fumbled it, but recovered it. At the 46-yard line, he fumbled the pitch out. Quickly got on it. That would have been a great break. Merriweather was there to cover it. But uh, McNeil kept the ball in front of him and down below him and recovered it. So the Jets keep the ball. And the Jets uh, 
Although Pat Ryan was caught throwing the football and run the ball here on this series, now they've got the throw. It's third down and ten. They've almost got the throw. They don't have to. There's nothing in the book that says they have to. Wesley Walker to the right and Lamb Jones to the left, and Ryan is back deep. Drilling one to the near side. It is juggled incomplete. Scott Durkee coming out of the backfield, coming laterally across the 50-yard line. That would have not gained uh, enough for a first down. And he juggled it all the way out of bounds into the Steeler bench area. Yeah, Durkee wide open, but of course the Steelers are going to give him that one if he can hold the football because it wasn't a first down throw. So here's Ramsey, a punch. Chuck Ramsey standing back at his own 32-yard line. Does a little landscaping up in front, and Paul Scancy downfield respects his kicking. Scancy's all the way back to his own 11. Here's the punt. Scancy had it measured right. He takes it at the 10. Scampers to his left. He's over the 15 and out to the 18-yard line. Guy Bingham getting the tackle. 44-yard punt. And the return is to the about the 18-yard line. We'll go back to the glasses again at this point. And the sun's out, Myron. Yeah, the sun's peeking through again. A beautiful day here, although a little bit cloudy. But all right, the Steelers with 35 seconds remaining in the third period, I would imagine, will continue uh, to play it conservatively to try to eat up time because they do have this 20-point lead, and they see the playoffs ahead of them. Liz Stout calling the signals under center. Stout to Harris. And Harris lost his blocker in his nail, running to his right. Coming across, pulling, was Greg Wolfley. But Wolfley got tangled up with a man he was trying to block, and, and Harris got caught in the whole situation and is brought down at the 15-yard line. Yeah, John Woodring was there, the left linebacker, and there was just no place for Franco to go. Woodring was waiting for him. That is a loss of almost four yards. Second down and 14. And it also is the end of the third quarter. The score, Pittsburgh 27, New York 7. Now this for IT&T, TV tune-in, and golf oil. History record. Well, the Jets are saying goodbye to Shea Stadium today, and the fans uh, out in the stands are making it a, a kind of an act of occasion. The... Uh, Police or the stadium security guards, I'm not sure which they are, just moved in uh, on a chint and gave him the bums rush out of the ball yard. He left defiantly, uh, the defiance aimed at his opponent more so than at the cops and threw him out. J.D. Fogarty points out they've assigned 140 extra policemen to this ballpark today because being the last game, they think the crowd might get rowdy. They had security people outside, Myron, with those riot helmets on, standing on an overhang all around the stadium looking down at the crowd. Here we go. Right to left now at the 15. Play fake by Stout. He's back there. Runs forward, throws on the move, and hits his target. Coming a little bit back and across, Calvin Sweeney is very close to a first down. Jerry Holmes covered on the play, but Calvin got away from him. Let's see where they put the ball. They're going to measure. Boy, that is a tight decision, too. Calvin had to, uh, as he made his move to the sideline, he came back just a little on that ball. I don't think he got the benefit of uh, anything in the placement of the ball. It would have appeared he had the 29-yard line. I thought he had it. He's that, got the first down. That's they the give it to thing. him. They give it to him on the measurement. Nice play by Calvin. He beat Jerry it. Holmes on it to get to the ball. Nice play. It's helped today to have Calvin out there and Hawthorne out there and, of course, Garrity, who has been out there. But uh, a few more people uh, back in, in fairly good health. Down on that sideline, you've got uh, Bradshaw, who started the ball game, and you've got John Stallworth wearing those uh, black slacks and a gray sweater and a black stocking cap. Pretty fair football players right on the sideline. The Pollard to the right. Give to Harris, the single running back. Running to the right, and he is trampled. Near the 30-yard line. Mark Gastineau got to him. I don't believe there was any gain on that. 
at the 29. It's going to be second down and 10. So the Steelers have worked off a minute of the fourth quarter clock. It's 27 to 7. In an imperative situation where if they hang on today, they guarantee themselves a, um, a wild, wild card. card break. Now, if they win today, and if Cleveland wins tomorrow, and st the Steelers lose next week, they would still win the division, right? That is... Is that correct? Here's Stout throwing. Uh-oh. He missed. Franco would come out of the backfield. And upfield, nobody got near it, very fortunately. There were some defensive players in the area. What I was trying to... Uh, Put in my mind, it says they guarantee themselves a wild card. Yeah, they would they would win the title uh, by dint of a better divisional record. See, to me, yeah, if they win today, they guarantee themselves the division championship, don't they? You might want to look into that. The worst they could come out with it would be a tie. Here's the pass fired in and out of the yards of Hawthorne. Look out, it's incomplete. Hawthorne was being blanketed by Bobby Jackson crossing over at the 37-yard line. And as he did, the ball popped out of his arms. And there were jets around him, but it fell incomplete. Wind coming out of the west, Colquitt kicking with the breeze now. Standing at his own 16 down in front of us. Downfield is Kirk Springs for the Jets. And Cole put a bad one. Off his foot to the far side and bouncing out of bounds near the 50-yard line. Doesn't happen too often, but that time it went off the side of his foot. And where you needed the extraordinarily good putt, he got a 22-yarder. We have a timeout in the ball game. With a score, Pittsburgh 27 to Jets 7. You're listening to Steelers Football on Mutual. A one-hour phone call from Norfolk, Virginia Beach to New York City could cost as much as $25. So remember, Walter, do your laundry. Don't mix whites and colors. Yeah. Jack, if the Steelers win today, they would clinch a wild card, but they would virtually clinch the divisional title. And I'll explain when we get another moment here between plays just why that is so. Okay. Here they come out of the huddle. The Jets moving left to right there at the 50-yard line. It's not over yet. Quarterback is Pat Ryan. Ryan's got two men wide to the right. Split backs behind him. Ryan stands in, fires, lobs it downfield, and it drops in front of Rick Woods, who was hustling to get over there. He laid it downfield, right down the middle for Lamb Jones, and Jones didn't get near the football. Rush from Gary Dunn, forcing him to unload it. We pause now for station identification on the Mutual Steelers radio network. More than just a radio station, 1250 WTAE, Pittsburgh. Jerome Barkham back in at tight end. Wesley Walker and Lamb Jones are the wide receivers. Kenny Lewis and Scott Durking are the running backs. Now somebody's playing taps with a trumpet. This is a colorful crowd. Back goes Ryan. Drills one incomplete down to the Steeler. 42-yard line. Vicky Schuler, And he was caught from behind by Ron Johnson. Mickey separates from Ron and then staggers and falls over on his backside. A little embarrassing, but those things will happen. So it's third down and ten now at midfield. Well, they've got some sort of a contingent of outstanding football players on this team from Penn State. Schuler is just one of them. Most of them on the defensive unit. This time, Wesley Walker to the right, the near side, and Lamb Jones out to the left. And Ryan fires over to the far side, almost intercepted by Donnie Shell. He came racing up as it went over people's heads at the 35. Shell zeroed in on it, intended for Lamb Jones. It appeared to bounce off his chest. Mel Blunt leaping into the air might have got a finger on that and deflected it to Shell. Shell earlier in this half deflected an interception to Mel, so that would have been returning the favor. And that would have been Shell's second interception of the day. Mel to Shell, Shell to Mel. Well, they hold him, and now comes the punt. Hell, Mel. 
Chuck Ramsey standing at his own 37. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Short snap and running with the football. And the carrier's Ron Crosby, who was the up man. And David Little nails it. Uh -huh. David Little and Rick Donnelly playing on that punt return team. They were ready for it. That means the Steelers get the ball at their own 45-yard line. The unsuccessful uh, gadget play did not work. And the Steelers get the ball back. It's 27-7. Shea Stadium will become the old field. And here's another former National Football League home field. Uh, we'll let you think about that. But what team teams played in that stadium? We'll be back. This was Comiskey Park, Chicago Cardinals home field, now the St. Louis Cardinals, and the Bears also played there. In fact, it was there in 63, George Hallis and the Bears beat the Giants in the NFL championship. Frank Pollard dragged down by the shirt tail after an eight-yard reception at the Jet 47. Bob Crable with a strong miss. Crable was the all-time leading tackler for Notre Dame. Certainly an outstanding athlete. Learning his how to make his presence felt here as a Jet, but still a young linebacker. And it takes time to work your way into that middle linebacking position in a 4-3. That's a tough spot. Second and two for Stout. Just his remarkable speed at 265 pounds, running about a 4'6", and he just is as fast as most backs in the league, and he just caught Harris right now. No, I'm not so sure that uh, Franco has had that kind of speed uh, for years himself. Has always been a most effective runner. You see him pulling away from Lance Mel and able to outrun Mel, but Gastineau, just like an arrow into your screen, drills him and knocks him down. Down, nevertheless, at the 28. Harris inside the 25. A gain of five. Six more for Harris. And for the day, Franco's totals now up to 67 yards. Harris almost with as many yards in this game, within one yard, as he's had in the last three games combined. And that's good news for the Steelers. I think this is a confidence-building time for them. They need to get their confidence pumped, especially this man, Cliff Stout. If Bradshaw can't go next week, they need him back in the lineup, and they need him to do the things that he can do well. Stout to Harris, breaks the tackle, and is down at the 18, close to first down. You know, Franco, a personal goal so many records already, but he has had seven 1,000-yard seasons. Only Jim Brown in NFL history had seven of them and now has a chance for eight, and he'd like to have it. The Steeler teammates would like to give it to him. He started today 152 yards. Well, that's a little confusing. We see the receiving here, but the rushing yards we're talking about, 152 yards rushing today and against Cleveland to make that 1,000. Well, he's got to, going to get about half of those, so he has a chance to be the only man to rush eight times for a thousand yards. First down, Pittsburgh. Wide open, Sweeney. Calvin Sweeney gives the Steelers an 18-yard touchdown. His second today. chance to catch and throw the football. So the Steelers now lead the New Jersey Jets 33 to 7. And the try for point by Anderson. Good. 34 to 7. Stout found the man open and he fired one. 
Little play action pass, throws the defense just long enough for Sweeney to break open. He did a good job of getting his fit and feet down inside the corner of that end zone. One down, a second one down. Never finished by me. Calvin Sweeney was quick to tell you what an outstanding basketball star he was in high school before going to USC as his second touchdown, five for the year. As Stout takes him downfield, three for three, and it's 34 to seven on the kickoff. 11 minutes left. Preston Brown, 30, and out to the 37. Brown and Springs have been the one-two return punch for the Jets, each leading the NFL punt and kickoff returns. But it hasn't been enough for New York as they are about to go seven and eight. 31-yard return. Brown springing out on that particular play. Most impressive. Almost broke it away. Right? Well, we were there when the Jets beat San Diego in the opener of the season, and they looked so good. They ran the ball effectively in that game, and, of course, that made the passing game so effective for them. And we go back to it today. They have not been able to run the ball effectively in this game. It's been the difference for them. Yeah, running won't do the job now. It's Lamb Jones, and he's to the Pittsburgh 44. share of criticism this year, but you can't fault the way he's played the last month. And today, an exceptional afternoon, seven catches, 146 yards, and the Jets' only touchdown, and he's going to have to go to a new jersey. Well, they've outlawed the tearaway jerseys in the NFL, but somebody tore that one halfway away, and he'll get a new piece of cloth over his head and shoulders. You see some of the frustration on the Jets' sideline. Not only a a sad season in many ways, but certainly a sad afternoon on their goodbye day to Shea Stadium. Ryan dumps it out to Barber, incomplete. Jack Lambert was waiting, lur lurching right there, and they step away from the receiver as if he knew what was coming. Well, that's the value of a guy like Lambert after 10 years. You know, a lot of people don't realize with all of his brawn and muscle how bright he has to be to play his spot. He's the man that calls the defenses out there. They're relayed to him. Woody Woodenhofer, defensive coordinator. He's the man who is the spiritual leader of that defense, the emotional leader. Get the subways ready. catches this year. That's the best ever for Walker as a Jet. Seven of them for touchdowns. And he told us yesterday, but at that, it's been a frustrating year. Even though I've had a lot of catches, I just, there have been so many times when I thought I had a touchdown. I was open, the ball was tipped at the last minute, or it wasn't quite there. He said, I just, you know, can't be real happy about the year. I haven't had enough touchdowns. Maybe you never get enough. Well, I suppose not. I, I think one of the problems he had earlier in this game when he dropped a crucial pass, he wanted to do too much with it. Wanted to run with it before he caught it, Dick. Third down and a flag down and a pass incomplete. Ryan. Ryan down. Been a hard day on quarterbacks. They've all spent time on their backs during this afternoon. Offside against the Steelers. That's something you don't really realize what kind of a toll those shots take on the quarterbacks, even when they aren't sacked that much, when they're being hammered on. And most quarterbacks take that kind of hammer. Offside, number 56, defense, third down. Robin Cole. Well, you found yourself on top of a quarterback many a time as he was throwing. I'll let you think about this. Was there ever a humorous comment made by the Unitases or the Stars or the people you had to play against? I don't know that there's that much humor in big sack, Dick. <laughs> Not when you got your, in those days, 290 pounds of Merlin Olsen on top of you. Kenny Lewis to the 32-yard line. Lewis from Virginia Tech activated mid-year with all the entries to the running backs in the New York stable. Rick Woods made the tackle. First down, New York. And Barber comes back in. Lewis goes out. I think the one, one of the greatest surprises I ever had as a, then a fairly young reporter was going into the Baltimore Colts locker room and seeing Johnny Unitas stripped down. I mean, he, the man did not have what you would call a very muscular body, and he took such punishment and was able to withstand that through the years. Ryan throws it away wisely. Four white 
shirts crowded along the sideline. They're almost like piranha looking for an interception. That's number 79, Larry Brown on the sideline with ice on an ankle there. On, with all of the injury problems the Steelers have had in their offensive line, it's big trouble. Jerome Barkham turns into a blocker as Robin Cole tries to go in and he gets back outside on the scramble, doing what he should do to try and help his quarterback. Unfortunately, Ryan unable to get the ball to any of his receivers, just fired it out of bounds. Well, that was an interesting picture. The tight end staying in to take the blitz away from Cole, but then realizing that Ryan was scrambling, trying to ad-lib his way out into the pattern. That's that 33 years of experience. Oh, Mike Merriweather. He had the interception, as Dunn had Ryan. Kenny Lewis, number 22, a third down back who's been pressed into service after the injury to Bruce Harper. Thought he had a chance at that football. A lot of pressure on Ryan on that play as he tried to get it out of there. Very done. Yeah, we're going to see Miami and Nebraska in that Orange Bowl for the possible national championship. Gary Dunn's grandpappy actually was there at the start of that university of Miami, was the president from 1926 to 1952. His dad and older brother have done also played football at Miami. Quarterback draw, and that's a fumble that goes to the Steelers. Edmund Nelson, 64, was in the thick of it and it looked like a quarterback draw. Hardly worked. And Robin Cole said, I'll just hang on to this. Oh, pleased to get his hands on that football. Ball stripped away from Pat Ryan. Fourth sack of the day. Opportunity for the Steelers to get their hands on the football again and move it down the field. Well, a sad day for Todd and Ryan, but you don't have to think too far back to a man who brought some pleasant memories, Joe Namath, to Don Maynard. His first game, Maynard... Apparently, there will be no playoff present for the New York Jets. Santa, in fact, uh, heading for the exits. He's looking for some. <laughs> Might be back to the North Pole. Who knows? Well, one of the things that Joe Walton's going to have to wish for for Christmas, some replacements in his defensive backfield, losing a couple of fine players to the USFL this year. That's right. Jerry Holmes, one of those. Another limb. Stays in the game here in the fourth quarter. That's one thing that has been consistent, as you see Holmes on his way to the new league, about Chuck Knoll. He, even in a game with lopsided dimensions, 34-7, to he has kept his veterans in. Bradshaw through the years at quarterback. Harris in. And maybe in this case, uh, sympathetic to Harris getting that 1,000 yards. What a job he's done that had never won a championship. Now is the only coach that can say he's four for four, four Super Bowl championships. Harris stacked up on this occasion. Dick looking down at the sideline, seeing Bradshaw so animated, talking to the receivers, talking to Cliff Stout. I've got to wonder how much of an asset he could have been to these Steelers had he been willing to stay on that sideline during the season. And I believe much of it was his choice. He did not think he could handle staying on the sideline. He told me today, as I talked to him in the locker room, he said, I wish I had known what it would be like to sit on the sideline. I think I could have handled it. But it was not until last week when he actually was there that he realized that he could actually put up with all the pressure and not being in the game. I think it hurts him coming back in to have been absent from practices, to have been absent from the sideline that long. Franco fighting. Makes the tackle. Short of the first down. Freeman McNeil. Well, in spite of the numbers today, he uh, certainly ranks in my book as one of the finest running backs in this league. And he's a man that will give you everything he has. No holes to run to today. Let's give some credit to that Steeler defense. Well, and you look back at the season for the Jets, and if you're a New York fan, so many places where you say we could have won here we should have won there but the key was when McNeil went down they were two wins five losses without McNeil and couldn't rally even though they had three straight wins
Williams coming into this one. Colquitt to Springs at the 19. Kirk Springs, who had that dramatic punt return for a touchdown to the Superdome to beat New Orleans, stopped at the 30. A 39-yard kick, 11-yard return, and was 6 minutes and 44 seconds, which will seem like an eternity for those who remain here at Jay Stadium. The Jets have the ball. Outstanding early season basketball matchup. Both teams figure to be unbeaten. They are now. The Tigers of Memphis State with their All-American Keith Lee. Kenny Fields, potential All-American for the UCLA Bruins. Could be a battle of unbeatens at Pauley Pavilion. 11.30 next Saturday night. Hope you'll be with us here on NBC for that one. Pat Ryan for Richard Todd. Down the middle to Barkham. He fumbles. Rick Woods picks it up, and the Steelers have it just like that at the 44-yard line. That's the fifth turnover of the day for the Steelers. <clears throat> They've turned the tables after coughing it up themselves last week five times, and ten times in the last two weeks, they have been on the receiving end of five turnovers today. Woods shaken up, as you'll see. He'll take a pretty good lick himself and is being helped off the field. Markham makes a fine catch. Best, number 25, Greg Best, the man who knocked that ball loose. And right here, Woods really gets leveled. Johnny Lamb Jones. Johnny Lamb, not, not afraid to stick his head in there as he made the tackle and sent Rick kind of wobbling to the sidelines. Well, fan demeanor will be an issue in the final minutes of this one. And Franco Harris... Gets about five. They're tearing apart, appears, some of the bleachers out under the scoreboard. Of course, some folks will look for a souvenir. There goes one home. Either that or some firewood. That's the old Yule Log, Shea Stadium vintage. Yeah, they're, they're throwing it out to their buddies out there. I guess they got the truck backed up. At the 49-yard line, Steelers ball. Second and five. Less than six minutes left. Scott letting that 30-second clock run down. Six, five, four. Franco. Short of the first down by a yard. Both these teams just want this game to end now. There's nothing more to be proved in this one today. The Steelers have done what they set out to do. The Jets, with a miserable afternoon, would simply like to have a chance to get in and take a shower, lick their wounds a little bit, and try and put this game behind them. Franco started the season at three 100-yard rushing games in the first four. It hasn't been that kind of year for him since, but looks like he might get 100 today. Off to his fastest start and perhaps his slowest finish, but he certainly has rebounded well today. Now he smells the playoffs. He's got a first down at the 40-yard line as he powers his way within nine yards of the 100-yard mark. Dick, oh, there, there, one of, somebody's going to be sitting in that in the front room. You talked about the matchup, Nebraska and Miami down in the Orange Bowl. Had the opportunity to do the, the Lombardi Awards. And one of, one of the great winners there, Dean Steinkohler, great right guard, pulling guard, and one of the men responsible for that Heisman Trophy. And along with him, Doug Dawson from Texas, Bill Fralick from Pittsburgh, Reggie White from Tennessee, the four finalists for that great award. And I'd just like to pass along congratulations to all four of those young men, and in particular, Dean Steinkohler, for being this year's Lombardi Award recipient. Well, he's a big horse in that offensive line, blocking for Rozier. We'll see him on New Year's night. Well, the January 2nd evening for the third game in our triple hitter of Bulls on NBC. It tells you a little bit about the college, the size of college players. I stood with those four finalists and felt a bit small. Let me tell you, just a bit small. You know, I was looking ahead to the UCLA-Illinois game we're going to do. And the Illinois from, from tackle to tackle. And uh, I think their they're smallest guy is like 260. UCLA, I mean, they're, they're all up in the 260s, 270 in the offensive lines today. Clock running, 337, 336 left. New York's finest is going to have a, they're going to have a busy time trying to protect the stadium, much less the people in it at the end of this game. Franco into a stone wall. 
That'll bring up third and long. Marty Lyons. Here's a man I'd like to say something about. Number 93 of the Jets, Marty Lyons. Here's a big galoot at 6'5 and 265 and a tough man on the field. He, is, he has formed a Marty Lyons Foundation in which the money is given to terminally ill children. And he is contributing to his society in a very heart-wrenching way. In fact, one of the nominees to go to the Super Bowl this year passed away this week. And Marty Lyons was just as touched by that as the parents of this 18-year-old child. And uh, he's got a, a heart as big as his numbers. We congratulate him on the good things he does. Mark Gastineau, and that's his first sack today. Just a little salute. 19th sack for Gastineau. He led the NFL coming into today's play. Interesting the fans who have cheered that war dance booed him that time. Not much purpose in it here. Just didn't seem like Boris even got off the ball. He's had to move out in place of Larry Brown at that tackle position. You see the frustration for Cliff Stout. Wisely, I think, Gastineau elected just to flip his arm up on that one and not... Not dance around. There's not much to dance about if you're a, if you're a Jet right at this moment or a Jets fan. The musicians have gone home. High dying spiral by Colquitt out of bounds. He won't be happy with that one. It's going to be the 22-yard line. So the Jets with two minutes and 17 seconds left in the game have the football. 24-yard kick, no return. Well, it's kind of a sour way. Then 20 years. The Steelers are in the playoffs as a wild card. Are they a serious playoff team, Merlin? Well, I think that's something we ought to look at. Uh, they certainly have done better in Super Bowl performances than any other team around, but they don't carry some of the qualities into this particular Super Bowl or into this particular Super Bowl playoff that they would like to have. Lewis can hang on. Woodruff on the coverage. It'll be second down and ten. Tomorrow on NBC. And of course, Pittsburgh will be watching that second one. First, Seattle and the Giants. Cleveland Browns will be at Houston. Of course, a Cleveland defeat would give the division championship to the Steelers. New England at Los Angeles. The Rams in a dog fight. Baltimore and Denver. Elway and the Broncos tough last week. They're looking for a wild card spot. Kansas City and San Diego. All tomorrow here on NBC. Beginning at 12.30 Eastern. Lambert very nearly with the interception. Jack got his hands on that one. Dick, you ask about the playoff hopes for these Steelers. I think you have to have a couple of things going for you when you get into the playoffs. One, you have to be healthy. The Steelers are really not healthy. They've had a lot of injuries. They have a lot of injuries right now, nagging injuries in their offensive line, injuries to receivers. They certainly don't have all their people on the field. Bradshaw, for example, still a real question mark, even though he played well in the early going today. 2.07 left. Ryan ducking from pressure. And Shell had a chance at another interception. Not his day, although he has won. Two consecutive plays where the ball was in Steeler hands. Something else you have to have going into the playoffs. You have to have balance. And with Stout in control of the offense, they, the Steelers have not been a consistent offensive team. You've got to be able to play your offense, your defense, and your special teams. You've got to have that kind of balance in the playoffs. And then you have to have big play people. Certainly they have a number on defense, but they have, don't have the receivers that they once had, and they have not had the quarterbacking of a big play quarterback during this season. See Richard Todd leaving the field early. Ramsey, high, soft kick to Scancy at the 38. Flag down as Scancy returns to the 48-yard line. Henry Odom tipped Johnny Lynn, number 29, over from behind, and I think they're going to call him from an illegal block. So under a guard of New York police blue, Todd ducks through the tunnel. His last game as a Jet in Chase Stadium. Two-minute 
warning. 149. Well, this one won't qualify for a fantastic finish, but as usual at the two-minute break, we enjoy one from the past. The win means that Pittsburgh is at least a wild card in the upcoming playoffs. Probably a division champion. Not to be decided yet, depending on Cleveland's last two games. The Jets are out. Pittsburgh ball, 149 left. And now a matter of Cliff Stout just taking care of the final seconds and going home. Meanwhile, well, I guess it's more than that. As Franco plowing straight ahead, still looking for the 100-yard day. I want to thank Larry Cirillo, our producer, Ted Nathanson, our director today. All the help in the booth. Jamie Adler, John Glasgow, Jim McLaughlin, Ron Zipkowski. And 99 yards, Joe Costanza. Oh, he's right on the mark again. I had it at 98, but Joe, you just can't believe how accurate he is. 99 yards, so Harris... Undoubtedly, they know that on the sidelines for Pittsburgh. And Franco will still need around 80 next week at Cleveland. Oh, wait a minute. Not, no, he won't. He'll need only about 50 next week at Cleveland. So he might well become the first ever to have eight 1,000-yard seasons. Does that indeed mean that we're going to see uh, a 32 come out of retirement? What did Brown say he was going to do if Franco broke his record? They're going to put on the pads again. Yeah, well, he'll have to do that next year. Now, Harris will have to break his record next year. 103 there yards for Franco. And he'll come out. No, he won't. He goes back in the huddle. He's not afraid to work. Well, you know what he said. He said, the more I carry the ball, the more effective I get. And when the running game is not working and you have to throw the football, Franco doesn't get many shots. And indeed, uh, he seems to get more effective. Has done in this ball game. Has played very well. Not unlike John Riggins. Redskins. More work, the better he gets. Final play probably of this game and of the 20 years that the New York Jets have occupied Shea Stadium as their home base. And they leave town to the booze of the few that have stayed for the final gun. Terry Bradshaw was the story. Didn't play all year. Didn't take a snap in a game. Came in and in the first quarter delivered two touchdowns on two touchdown throws. He said no one thought he could do it. He came back and he showed the quality. Number 12, still one of the great quarterbacks in the game, even when he's not 100%. Oh, all week long, I've just kept thinking about pulling it off. I'm going to pull it off. I'm going to pull it off. They don't believe it. Bobby Lane doesn't believe I can do it. Nobody thinks I can do it. And I've got my mind in tune that if there's any way it can be pulled off, I'm going to, I'm going to pull it off. Well, Terry, you made believers out of us. And we hope your arm is well enough to get you a chance to come back now and play in the playoffs. So the Steelers are in the playoffs as at least a wild card. The Jets' hopes are gone as is their tendency here. Subway is on its way to New Jersey. We'll be back in a moment. Fans uh, look for souvenirs here at Shea Stadium, reminding them of the 20 years of the Jets, and certainly not of this game. 34-7, to the final. The Steelers win it, and Terry Bradshaw, well, he was, he was full of adrenaline this weekend. There he is with a moderate shot. We'll get his reaction. How serious is the elbow injury? What are his thoughts about today as they look ahead now to Cleveland next week and the playoffs? They have qualified. We'll join Terry Bradshaw, Ahmad Rashad here at Chase Stadium. But first, let's go to NFL 83 and Len Berman in New York. Oh, right after these words from your local station. It was all Pittsburgh today. Cliff Stout to Calvin Swinney. The Steelers rock 34 to 7. This is the Budweiser NFL Report, brought to you by Budweiser, proud sponsor of the U.S. Olympic team. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Hi again, everyone. Welcome back to our New York studios. Len Berman for NFL 83. And so now five of the ten playoff spots have been clinched. The Steelers are a wild card team at the minimum, so they join the Raiders in Miami in the AFC and Dallas and Washington in the NFC, five of the ten playoff spots. There's the final score. Pittsburgh 34, the Jets 7. Now, standing by at Shea Stadium, the man who played his first game of the year in fine fashion really got the Steeler offense rolling. Terry Bradshaw is standing by now with us at Shea. 
Terry, Terry, you hadn't played all season. You came out and played exceptionally well. What was your biggest adjustment today? Well, the thing that I was worried about mostly was the pass rush because I hadn't faced one other than in practice, and those are my, my teammates. And uh, today I was concerned whether or not I would be able to concentrate on the coverage and not worry about the pass rush, and I was able to do that. And I knew if I could do that, then I'd be able to at least go to the people that should be open. All right, the big question, how serious is your injury? Well, it, uh, I thought I had gotten hit on the, the touchdown pass to Calvin, and uh, you told me I didn't. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's swollen and, and very sore, and uh, I'll just have to wait probably a, a couple of days and, uh, and go from there. The amazing thing to me watching you play is you had your timing back. All your balls were right on target. Well, I had thrown the, the ball well all week. And even last week when I first came back, I had been accurate with the football. That was surprising to me because I'm not that accurate a passer. All right, now here's the, here's the touchdown ball right here, Terry. Tell me what's happening. Well, this is a scramble. I had a pass out to Benny, and Benny was covered, and I moved out of the pocket, and I saw Garrity come across, and uh, I didn't think I could get the ball to him. And I, it's, I thought it was going to be intercepted, and he just, he just caught the football. Did you have second thoughts on that ball? Because you did throw it all the way across the field. <laughs> I had second thoughts on it. I hadn't really put my arm in that kind of a position before, but, uh, and I couldn't really throw it the way I normally throw it, but it got there. It, was, it, put us in, it gave us the lead, which is what we needed to do. All right, tough situation now. You go into next week. You've got kind of a bad arm, but you do need the work. What's going to happen next week? Well, I'm personally going to have to see if I can work. If I can't, probably another great thing that came out of this game today was the fact that Cliff Stout came in, played with a lot of confidence, moved the football well, threw the ball well, got some touchdown passes, and his confidence has to be soaring. So whether I play or not, we've got him rolling again, and that's going to be a good plus for our offense. Well, Terry, it was a great comeback from a great player. Congratulations <laughs> today, and I hope you're well next week. So do I. Thank you very much. Back to you. Okay. Thank you, Ahmad Rashad and Terry Bradshaw. Here's a guy who hasn't played all year. A pressure game. Jets really need a win. He comes in, completes five of his first eight for 77 yards and two touchdowns. A remarkable performance by the old pro, Terry Bradshaw. We'll have highlights of the game, and we continue on the Budweiser NFL Report in just a minute. Steelers clinch the playoffs for the tenth time in the past 12 years under Chuck Knoll. So let's show you the highlights of a day that was all Pittsburgh. Final score of 34 to 7. Thanks for the memories at Shea, but as we mentioned at halftime, those memories were all Pittsburghs today. Terry Bradshaw, gallant performance coming off the injury. First action of the year, 17-yard pass to Greg Garrity. Interesting, that's Garrity's first touchdown catch of the year. An excited pair, Garrity and Bradshaw, 7-0 Steelers. Now, early second quarter, Calvin Sweeney was a big man today. There he takes the 10-yard touchdown pass. It was 14-0 Pittsburgh. Rough, rough day by Richard Todd. Ron Johnson on the interception, carried it all the way down inside the 10. It was all Pittsburgh, second quarter. Now, the first half ended in fitting fashion. Todd was intercepted, overthrowing Lamb Jones. Intercepted by Donnie Shell. That is how the half ended. 20 to nothing. It was all Pittsburgh. The score was very indicative by what had happened. Bradshaw, of course, had the bad elbow, could not return. Richard Todd, the bad thigh, he could not return. So both starting quarterbacks were out. Now, Stout, 13 yards on the pass. Complete. Benny Cunningham, touchdown. 27 0 Pittsburgh at the time. Now in the third quarter, Pat Ryan replacing Richard Todd. This was his finest moment. Three quick plays. That was the touchdown to Lamb Jones. But then Stout really capped it. This is what the Steelers need from him next week and then on in the playoffs. 34 to 7. Cliff Stout happy. He got the touchdown pass to Sweeney. Much as Bradshaw there had done. The Jets unhappy. But farewell to Shea. And that's how it winds up 34 to 7. Thanks, Lenny. Now, Cliff, you had a great drive in that fourth quarter. You guys took the ball, controlled the ball all the way down the field, and ended up with a great touchdown pass. Well, uh, that was nice to get it there. Uh, what it was was a play-action pass to, to Calvin, who was supposed to run an outcut, but uh, the defender on that side just, just sat there and kind of watched him run by. So Calvin just stuck up his hand and went to the corner of the end zone, and uh, we barely got it in there. But uh, it's a good feeling. Things have, we've been struggling the last few weeks, uh, you know, losing three straight games. We needed a big day like today. Had to be a great confidence builder to, to have a drive like this and then cap it off with a nice touchdown pass. Well, like I say, we've, we've been struggling, and uh, touchdown pass has been hard to come by for me the last few weeks, well, all season, really. And uh, to play like that today, and uh, Terry came in, played well, and uh, then to come in after him and, and get the job done was, it was good for the whole team. What about your preparation all week? Now, you find out that Monday that Terry Bratch is going to start this 
week. How did you prepare for this game? Well, mentally it was kind of tough. Uh, I wanted to, to finish the job that I started this year and, and uh, try to finish the season, but I understand we had to, had to do something when we were struggling. It was hard to keep up for it mentally. Uh, I was a little bit down. But then again, I think I was able to relax a little bit, uh, kind of clear my mind a little bit and stop pressing as I had been last week, and uh, it worked out well. Now, you and Terry were huddling quite a bit on the sideline. What's going on in all those huddles? Well, uh, he was trying to get me to open it up a little bit. One of the problems we've had this year is, to, is being a little bit too conservative, uh, just sitting on the ball. And what we had to do is mix it up on first down. He did it well in the, uh, in the first half. And then our two touchdown drives in the second half, we were throwing on first down, mixing things up, keeping them off balance. And it worked pretty well today. Well, it's a lot easier to mix things up when you've got a lead, isn't it? Well, uh, you can do it with a lot more confidence. Uh, you, we, were out, we were all out there relaxed. Everybody was having fun and laughing in the huddle. The defense uh, just played fantastic today, put us in a good, good position all day long. Now you had to win one of two. Were you, was your team feeling a little bit of pressure coming into this game, wanting to clinch that playoff spot now and not not going into the last game of the season? I think so. We wanted to not going to Cleveland and have to win the championship there. We wanted to get a little bit of momentum. Uh, we're going to be up for the Cleveland game. We have to continue to play well and take it into the playoffs. All right. Congratulations to you, Cliff, and good luck to you next week. Back to NFL 83 and Lynn Berman. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you, Amal. So the question this week, will it be Stout? Will it be Bradshaw? The regular season may be ending, but the questions about quarterbacks don't. We'll be back with a lot more to tell you about as we wrap it up on this special Saturday edition of the Budweiser NFL Report. And we continue from New York in just a minute.